billions of dollars that they lost. Thank that God we're going to bail yeah. them out. <laughs> <laughs> thank That's God. true. Yeah. I'm so glad Don't that worry, we're going to bail them out. <laughs> I mean, Ama- the American people, the 99%, we don't need bailout. We don't need stimulus checks. But hedge funds, they're going to want They need that money, guys. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! Yo, what's up, Internet? Welcome back to another episode of Three Averagely Intelligent Dudes Discussing Dangerous Ideas. Uh, my name is Rod, this is my brother Mac, and this is my best friend John. And today we're talking about stocks. Yeah, baby. we're talking about the big, g- the, the big GameStop blow up. Stonks. You know? Stonks. Everybody's, everybody's talking about it and uh, we want to talk about it, too. I think yep. we're going to branch this conversation off into a, a, you know, a bigger conversation about our economic system and how that works, how we bred uh, wealth inequality is kind of been bred yep. into the system since the start the top one percent <laughs> yeah but you know so we're gonna talk about that a little bit about the big guys versus the little guys the top versus the bottom how that plays out in our economic situations and center that all around what's happening with fucking GameStop right power now. power to the players power to the players power to was, the players i know i saw that in the fucking reddit great. and i just like dang it's like it almost feels like this shit's scripted sometimes, you know? Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, been the GameStop the logo, logo or slogan forever. for years. And then now all of a sudden it just hits. Yep, One of the things hits. about this that I'm trying to understand that yeah. I haven't I haven't quite done all enough research on. Yeah. How is GameStop even still a thing? Oh, like yeah, Blockbuster's that's... dead, right? <laughs> Blockbuster's so dead. Funny. All these other type of like cause like everyone buys their video games online that I know. Mm-hmm. I don't know people who buy physical copies anymore. Yeah. On top of that, we have COVID-19 restrictions. Yep. So how the fuck is your little video game blockbuster still well, up and running? Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you were in a GameStop? Uh, I went inside of a GameStop a year and a half ago to see if I could find a charger for my Game Boy Micro, and they laughed me out of the building. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty much point in case. But I was actually going to say that if you look at the GameStop, especially over the last five years or so, it's not really selling video games. It's selling video game merchandise. And pre-orders. That's what it does. It sells you video game merchandise. They've shifted their product lines to pop toys. Um, You know, like it's – the video games are like a culture now, and they're just – they're feeding into the entire culture. So, like, you can buy a lot of the – toys and the action figures and a lot of this other merchandise type stuff. It's like an accessory hey, fan shop now exactly. as opposed to like a video game store. Exactly. Um, um, and I think that, you know, some people are into physical copies for whatever reason, but I think that that's why I, cause I thought about that many years ago when I was still shopping at games, I was like, why do they have all this like toys and stuff like that? But yeah. it's because they could see that the market was shifting to more online stuff. Now that I understand more about economics, I'm like, oh, the business – they were trying to shift their business model so that they could cater to different items that you may – like physical items. Yeah. Things that you actually wanted to have that you couldn't just get via download. I, I remember, and, like, midnight pre-releases still being a thing. Oh, yeah, people like dress up. seven, eight for big years ones, ago, yeah. you know, yeah, like, that was still a big thing. We used to and stuff uh, with Call of Duty and shit like that. Like, I remember standing in line. Uh, the mm-hmm. point is none of that was working. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, GameStop has been tanking for a while now. Not tanking, but it, it like I, I got the chart pulled up here right now. But stagnation and everything that you were just describing, John, is exactly what the rich people were saying as well. Right. Is is so that why they were kind this of is, having their this eye is on the it? reason why? Yeah. Let, let's get let's get all the viewers caught up because some of you might not have heard about this yet and don't know exactly what's going on. So let me catch you up on like exactly what the the spill is here, and then we can break it down a little. Yeah, bit give us deeper. the timeline. Right, right. Let's get so, the tea. Um, what you're saying is completely true. GameStop is like a blockbuster in a sense. Like they give out physical copies of games and things as a storefront. And that business model is being disrupted at a heavy pace right now, right? Yeah. Like Amazon, we're talking Amazon's doing this to the big guys, let alone little retail stores that we used to um, depend on for niche items like that getting wiped out um, by the internet, right? And so even you mentioned it too, with COVID on top of that, yeah. this is what the big guys are looking at. You know, the money smart people, the people who are constantly evaluating these types of things and these businesses. And this is what they see 
when you're when you're trading stocks and stuff, right? This is just measuring value of a company back and forth, and yeah. and that's based on all the economic things that we were just talking about, like who's buying, who's using, what's hot, what's not, and they making something new. Anyways, GameStop's in trouble for all those reasons. Nobody really goes to brick and mortar stores anymore, and then COVID kept us all inside. So these guys are like mega short on GameStop, right? Mega short. Now that's fine, that's cool. Everybody's gonna short some stocks, but where a lot of people get queasy about these guys is they know this right so they have this information they collude that information with each other they're like yo we're sitting at the water cooler at some big institutional trading firm and i'm like yo mac i got this new hot shit happening right now dog gamestop everybody's shorting gamestop you can know you, can you explain shorting right yeah, it so just means the bet against okay bet against to say that like if, if, if it really speculation is betting right let's just call it like that um it's educated betting but the point is uh, to short something means you're going to bank on the fact that the price is going to go down. Right. Okay. So you're selling the stock. You don't actually I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of like of how stuff, trading a stock and works. But basically, it short means that, yeah, basically <laughs> shorting something means that you are thinking it's going to decrease in value. Yeah. And going long on something means that you think it's going to increase right. in value. Or okay. buying it. Things are gonna yeah, I just right. needed so, a quick definition because yep. I know very little about the stock market. OK, yep. fire. So then that's that's what a short is. It's like when. A bunch of people, anybody gets and says, I think that this stock's going to go down, and they put their money on that bet. So all the big guys are like, yo, we're shorting GameStop. We're shorting GameStop for all these reasons. But also this, the value of something is not just based on reasoning. It's based on what people are actually doing. Right, right? Action. So when everybody starts selling, right, then this kind of creates a selling pressure on the market, and then eventually they'll go on somebody like Jim Cramer or whatever. Is that his name? You're talking about the guy on Fox that has yeah, all the, the doodads? He's like the right? fucking – he's the uh, – uh, what the, what's the guy that smashes watermelons? <laughs> Gallagher. Gallagher. He's, he's Gallagher like the Gallagher of, of, of fucking stock markets. Of financial <laughs> advice for sure. I feel that. Hilarious. So these guys will get on there, and then they'll, they'll sh- badmouth the stock too. They'll say, well, this is all the reasons why we think GameStop's going to go down, blah, blah, blah. You're sitting at home. You're like, wow, that's Bill Ackman or whoever. Like he knows what he's talking about. So you start getting um, what's called bearish, meaning you think it's going to go low too. On that so this is how it normally works right so this is what all the institutional traders are doing they're all short on GameStop for valid valid reasons but here comes the lonely old internet and you know the internet love to trip you up bro the internet love to see some shit you're doing and be like about yep. to get be a shame if it. something disrupted that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, Redditor user potato ass six nine six nine came in and said that's a lovely market you have there Absolutely. be a shame if somebody <laughs> artificially uh, inflated uh, your stock price and it's so, funny because like COVID 19 couldn't crash the market but one forum post on reddit <laughs> dude i'm serious like and it, dude y'all realize bitcoin came out of a reddit too right like this <laughs> like these guys are smart in here there's some smart cats on the internet and they're exchanging some really smart ideas on this oh yeah so um Nonetheless, I was trying to pull up. Hold on, let me see if I. It's can almost like it. economic satire. I mean, they have Dogecoin. That yeah, it, th- like they're working it right. Like a meme could be anything, and and they talk about that. Like this is a game we're all playing, right? Like this whole speculating and convincing each other that the value is this and that. Like it's a game, right? Yeah. And so they're playing the game. Nonetheless, the redditors get together and they say, "Well, we see what you're saying about GameStop, but we have our own view." Like Mac was saying. So there's a redditor out there, and he's been. Uh, bullish on GameStop for forever and he's like yo look GameStop's got a new CEO guy you know they got like a new person in the, on the head side on the board and they're trying to push more to an online model and you know they're in pop culture and anyways all the other reasons that you can make up of why you think that GameStop's going to be they're the only long. game brick and mortar left there That's is hot. like That's you can it. go to Best Buy kind of and you can go to these other places but there's only one yeah GameStop yeah everything would else you, is mom and pop would it, you say that that was the reasoning behind it that that People were just bear like bullish on GameStop or do no. you Oh okay. So this this one Redditor like was like on this platform right here called Wall Street Bets, right? Street this Bets. all started on this subreddit called Wall Street Bets. There's a guy they, that's where they do. They speculate on the market, they go back and forth on their little like um like, This is what I think. This is like, what I think. Like 4chan found a Bloomberg <laughs> terminal. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. That's right? funny. So this, their whole thing is like memeing Wall Street and like making jokes about it and whatever. Just talking about stuff. Anyway, so, so this dude puts out this very long uh, soliloquy. It's up on the it's up on the, the screen right now. And he's talking about how. Uh, so he puts up this post and he's talking about how he thinks all the economic reasons. But he also mentions, hey, just to let you all know, too. All the big timers, like this stock is like 84% short right now. Mm. Like there's 
overwhelming short numbers. Actually, when I was looking up the, the numbers later, it was at 140% short or some shit like that. So it's shorter than they even have a stock to short. Weird game we're playing here. Anyways, point is, the Redditors look on this now, so they're like, hmm, wait. So if we all get together, we can kind of stick it to the man here is what they're saying, essentially. It's like we caught them. We caught them with their hand out. You know, it's yeah. like you caught you caught their you, hand was in the cookie yeah, jar. You yeah. Know, you, you caught you look. You took a peek over here and you see what that guy's hand is. And you're like, yo, let's let's collude on this guy. So they get together and they're all like, yo, we're all going to buy GameStop. Right. We're going to buy GameStop for this reason. And so they in, influence all their Redditor friends to start buying GameStop. Well, the buying power of this Reddit together was enough to start pushing the stock price of GameStop up, which has started to create what's called a short squeeze, meaning you know a bunch of people are short, but you start driving the price long. This creates all of them. They get called on their positions, meaning they lose, essentially, and then they have to, to buy more to offset their positions. It's whatever. They have to buy, and it pushes the stock even further. So the yeah, point it's is a, it's a complicated mess, but basically so when – a lot of big corporations and banks and people like that, they betting against they're betting against GameStop. Yep. These people come in, they say, Well, we're gonna stick it to you by artificially inflating the price of GameStop, yep. which makes these companies lose money in the short term. So as they're shorting the stock, but the stock is going up, they're paying money they're paying rather money. than getting money. Yep. So they have to and so what's happening is you're seeing a lot of them, they're mass selling their stocks because they're like, Oh, we Hold gotta on. get out of this. Look at these numbers. Melvin Capital lost fifty three percent. Doc, I'm talking like the number was some like somewhere near two or three billion dollars. Billions, billions of dollars that have been lost. Thank that God we're gonna bail years. them out. <laughs> <laughs> thank That's God. True. Yeah. I'm so glad Don't that worry, we're gonna bail them back. out. I mean, <laughs> Ama- the American people, the ninety nine percent, we don't <laughs> need bailout. Che- we don't need stimulus checks, but. Hedge guys, funds, they're gonna want. They need money. that money, guys. <laughs> oh, and they're calling for it in big numbers, dude. Watching <laughs> these guys uh, piss and squirm has been the best. One of them cried most. on CNN. Oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> I mean, they're feeling it, dude. They're feeling it. Uh, it reminds me of I forget what movie it is. Oh, the other guys. You ever seen the other guys in the beginning when she's like, how much they lost at the bell opening? And he's like, uh, two. And she's like, million. He's like, no oh, billion. billion. And then she screams, <laughs> shit. Like, that's how I feel like is what's happening with them right now. Like, imagine them in the office being like, I just. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine how reamed the analyst got. Like, you know, 8 a.m., the analyst is in there looking at the numbers. 10 o'clock, the boss comes in and he is like, hey, uh, Jim. Yeah, I need to tell you something. We've lost two point seven million dollars overnight because somehow the stock of GameStop is surging. And Jim's like. What? <laughs> no, this is their first. This is their first word. That's impossible. That's impossible. We've been shorting it. How could it possibly We're be going We're in control high? of the stock market. <laughs> How could this be? No way. I am the stock yeah, market. <laughs> exactly. Like, so these guys are are are, are whopping them right now in the market, <sighs> and and they're pissed. You know, and this is what's created the whole Hufflepuff. Uh, um, it's really created this situation that's fun to watch, where the bankers are are in this. Like, listen to the bitch and complain. It's like when your own move gets pulled against you. Yep. It's yeah. like if you're playing something, you're playing basketball, and this guy just keeps hitting you with threes, and he's like, I got the analogy for you. It's when Ric Flair puts you in the figure four leg lock, and you flip that motherfucker over. And you get him on the figure. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. all you got to do is flip him over, and now he's in pain. <laughs> and and you finish them with their finisher. Yes. Like, that's what happened It's here. when they try to give you the pedigree, and then you pick them up and give them the <laughs> razor's <laughs> edge or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what happened. They got countered, and now they're just bitching. They're just bitching. And before it was like always like, well, what? There's nothing wrong. I'm, I'm not doing anything illegal. Not only are they bitching, didn't they shut down some of these apps? Oh, yeah. They're not trades? just bitching. They oh, are, yeah. They oh, are taking rapid action. I thought it was really funny. Robin Hood, which is a, um, it's a, startup, a tech startup platform for – their whole idea was that they were going to give the power of the stock market back to regular people by allowing them to trade stocks without having to go through a big brokerage firm. Yeah. And it was really funny. As soon as the brokerage firms leaned on Robinhood, they were like, we're freezing GameStop stock on yeah, Robinhood. You cannot buy or sell GameStop. Some of these places even force sell the yeah. stock yeah, for you. That's crazy, too. Ridiculous. That's and the name be like of them app coming app in Robin here. Like, They'd be like coming in here and be like, hey, uh, we decided that we're going to sell this table, so you guys are going to have to. 
Yeah, get, it get out of here. It's like, yeah, you're done. Uh, I own this table. You can just take it yeah, from me. And then the people who sold it are the people, their name is Table Givers. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> like, you told me you were giving me this table for, well. Take it back. Take it because back. the idea that their name is Robin Hood, it makes, but they're it's selling so for the rich. They're doing the complete <laughs> antithesis. They're literally of what doing their the antithesis name. of what a fucking Robin of Hood what would they do. Their Which always makes me wonder what's that pressure like? Like, what is that? Like, because you said we've seen this happen to politicians. We're yeah. seeing this happen to big. We've seen this happen to like social media apps. It's like, self interest. The biggest, the biggest people who you feel like, damn, these motherfuckers run shit. Like, ain't nobody bullying Amazon. But then all of a sudden they come around and be like, um, we're going to go ahead and do what everybody else is telling us to do right now. And it's like, who comes into your office and the is Fed. like, slide something on your table is like, you need to fix this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just like the other guys when like you know maybe halfway to two thirds into the movie they, they go up. into the no 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 they go into the office like the their captain calls them into the office and there's some dude in a suit in there yep. and he's like talking this is so and so from the fucking department whatever. of whatever men dude in black who runs the goddamn police or something and he's like cut the crap yep and then he just leaves he yep. was like I've never seen he's like I've worked here for thirty years that guy's only been down here once yep. Literally. That's the pressure. They put the you, squeeze. You see men that you've never seen before and only heard of, and they come and talk to you, and and then when you they leave your office, you change your <laughs> ways. This is a great. This is a great thing to think about, though. Who who came into Robin Hood? Yeah. Who came into the board of directors or who's in control mm. of CEOs? Whatever. I mean, was it the Fed? Uh, you know, was it a, a form of? Was it's, it a branch of our government? It's, was it Wall it's Street? The, it's the Donald Trump phone call. This this will be really bad for you. If yeah, you this could be really, really dangerous. Really bad That's what I was if you thinking. Don't fix that, this I was up. thinking double speak and or some sort of self interest where it's like you're going to do that. Well, that's not what we're about. We're Robin Hood. We're about something. It's like you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. There's no question. Yeah. Like what what kind of power is that? Yeah. Is that the power of the one percent? I would say it's definitely the anybody who owns these institutions, right? Like the people who are. At the very, very top, which you know, yeah, whether you call one, that point zero one Illuminati or the Billionaire Boys Club, or if you call it the one percent, or whoever you want, whoever's call taking it, meetings in the, the Seychelles, the yeah. powers that be, you know, whoever's keeping their money in the Caymans, you know, yeah. like wh- whoever those Deutsche. guys are, right? You know what I mean? But those yeah. dudes will show up, and and that's the thing that sucks, dude, is like when when the populace, like the people, take on their power, their power of communication or something, it's a sham it's a fraud it's, it's got to be regular it's bullshit this is crap we gotta but, shut it down you know but when they do it behind the closed doors and when they lean on their actual power to just thumb screw the whole system that's totally like yeah whatever. when the one percent puts that's their just part thumb of the game. on the scale it's yeah. perfectly acceptable yeah, but when everybody game. in the 99 percent starts putting their fingers on, on the scale right. they're like oh no 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 that's not how the system's supposed to work let's yeah. put some regulations in place yeah and it's super super crap but so ingenuity man i mean just the uh, you know from somebody who understands now this is why i don't trade stocks personally this is why i do not trade stocks i trade currencies oh all the way hey let me go ahead and throw this disclaimer in real quick on this whole conversation uh this is not in any way shape or form financial advice okay nope. As a matter of fact you should never take advice from this podcast this no, is three no, there's no all. financial political <laughs> no, religious there's no, no advice, advice being given on this yes. podcast like, all actions you take are solely yes. your responsibility 100 percent. all terms and conditions may apply <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So with that being said, I trade currencies because uh, stocks are too easy manipulated, right? Like the the, you know how hard it is to manipulate the currency of a government. You know, not that it doesn't. No, no, not that it doesn't happen. Like, and and we can talk about how that happens, but. You're not gonna get a subreddit to do it. I promise you that. There's no well, way no, you're gonna I mean, get a, a, the a, government a, a group. Uh, right. So the, well, the government. People who are in bed with the government control it yeah. because the Federal Reserve, the people who print the money for the United States, are not actually part of the government. But you, yeah. but you know your enemy here. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Like whereas, you can point them out. Whereas GameStop, this time it was the people, right? But normally what it is is it's two, three, four billionaires get together and they say we're going to massively buy this stock. Yeah. You know? would, like would we're going to artificially Would silver be it. considered a currency or is that like No, that's, else? A, that's what's called a commodity. commodity. So like um, oil, silver, corn – Anything that we use is like a commodity um, or like a food source, you know, like all those things are traded. Uh, the reason they're called commodities, right, is they're like a finite resource that's created from the earth, 
instead of like something that is a company that manufactures a product or a good or a service. So stocks are like, you know, parts of businesses, commodities are uh, inta- like intangible resources, like resources. Yeah, like and then, barrels of oil. And then currencies are obviously yeah, money. 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 Yeah. And, and it, like you said, same thing, too. That's weird that you're just betting on the, the inflation and deflation of money against each other or you're betting on the price of an, a barrel of oil, how much that's going to be worth to the. So speculation is a really weird game we play in general yeah. it seems like the people who would be betting on that are the people that influence those things like right you know Absolutely. like, like right. The, the dick cheney's and the george bushes you know would be like the ones making money off of oil stuff because they know like we're gonna go to these they know uh, Absolutely. We're go to these fields and yeah i mean you see that you saw this with they know. um i can't remember what the guy's name was but there was a guy who came on to i think maybe you were listening to it the other day but there was a guy that came on to one of the news shows and was talking about how hotels are going to be hurting they're going to be terrible you know like hotels are going to go through like he was like they might their stocks might go to zero and obviously this kind of announcement in it influences people who own stocks in hotels to sell them them. and on the back end that man bought billions of dollars worth of hotel stocks because he knew that the hotel industry was going to get a bailout it's not like they were going to let hilton fail or whatever so he knew well, they're going to come back. So I'll just – I'll push the price down, buy a bunch of it, and then in two, three years when it rallies back up and everybody's traveling again, I'll make a shit ton of profit. Yep. And and people do this all the time. All the time. All the time. That's the big problem here is that this is nothing new. That's the that's the, the thing that everybody's really feeling slapped in the face by is, is again, like what they did is collusion, but it's no more or less collusion than anybody else has ever perpetuated on the market of like influencing your friends to buy or sell something that you think is yeah. valuable. And I've, I've always felt like all trading is insider trading. It just depends on who's inside and side, who's outside. outside. Like, you know, like you like the fact that you're in these meetings, but then as a private citizen, you can go buy stocks that inherently provides the opportunity for insider trading. It's like you can't just re- erase, erase that information that. from your mind when you go to sit down and trade at your stock profile mm-hmm. later that night. Like you heard all of the shit that went down in that meeting. I think as according to the rules as they stand now, you're allowed to trade based on that information. You're not allowed to give that information to others. Right. So you're not allowed to go out the boardroom, call your friend Johnny and be like, Johnny, but – Who's not going to do that? Yeah, who's you know, not who's doing not going to know a super lick and hit your homies up who happen to also be billionaires? Because yeah. if you're a billionaire, you hang out with other billionaires. So who's not going to tip yeah. their homie off and be like, yo, just under the table. I'm just letting you know. No yeah. allowed to say we, this, we saw this with, uh, you know, in December when they started getting uh, Congress started getting briefed about COVID-19 and all that. They started selling shares. They yeah, started. Yeah using that information to make money off of the stock market to get out before they got fucked before before the rest of all of us knew that it was going to be an issue an issue yeah before they announced it i mean shit um gavin newsom is part uh he part owns i think eight different companies and across these eight companies they received over like eight million dollars in ppp loans from the federal government um which i mean it's hard to say what that is, but it's to me that's a bad look. Mm. That's a bad look if you're a part owner of a of a if you're the person who gets to decide that things get shut down, but then also you're the person that gets to decide the loans that get sent out to people yeah, and stuff like you, that. When like you own parts of those weird. industries, and kind of like, weird. Well, we're not going to close those industries because I have a, my fingers in that pie. No, he did close. They they closed them, but oh, it, they get the loans. They get the loans. They yeah, get the PPP yeah. loans from all of that stuff. Because they're closed. Yep. And you know, dude, it's crazy. And it's happening right now, right? It's it's this is always happening. But this is the big story because here's the crazy thing. It's not illegal. And that's what GameStop is talking about. These people on GameStop and these guys are like, well, we need more regulation. You never said that. Well, you're doing it, but now you're you're advocating that. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Do as Clowns. I say, not, not as, as I, I do, do right? Yeah. Clown. Rules for thee, none but, for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Clownery. Here we, here we see it's like a headline. Nancy Pelosi buys Tesla calls, stands to benefit from new Biden EV plan. Electric vehicle plan. Yeah, yeah. electric vehicle plan. So this is literally right now. She's knowing damn well that they're trying to push this bill through Congress and how that's going to. And, and it's not that we don't know that they're trying to build, push this bill through Congress, but she knows how close it is to actually being a thing or not being a thing. And here she is. She's just going to make yeah, spending, spending between half a million and a million on some Tesla calls. Yeah. And then here's the big question now. Right. Don't you want that plan now? 
Like, you want that plan now. Oh, yeah. Like, even if you didn't really want that plan as, like, a politician, but now as a as an individual citizen who has hella Tesla stock, oh, you want that plan. You want Not that only EV do you plan. want that, that EV plan, you want that EV plan to go to Tesla. Yeah. And it's, like, yeah. weird. Now it's, like, the market is influencing our, our pol- politics and vice versa. It, it's yeah. fuckery because, like, you know— I remember thinking to myself, like, okay, well, you know, Citizens United, we got to get money out of politics because of the lobbyists. If we can get rid of the lobbyists, maybe we can have these politicians be a little more like, you know, power to the player type shit. But you look at this, and now you got, there there ain't no lobbyists. It's them. It's them. (laughs) It's just like, oh shit, Biden's talking about some of this Green New Deal stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna buy into this. Yeah. I think I might Tesla. invest in some Tesla, some solar panels. Yeah. Yep. I think I might get into wind. You know, like it's just like a random thing. I and thought it's about. not. And it's not just like Biden bring it. Like they're the ones who are gonna vote on this that's shit. What I was that's saying. the point. That's yeah, the it's like it's oh, the, the solar energy bill. Yeah. Yeah. And if somebody yeah. and, and like if let's say Nancy yes. Pelosi, Pelosi bought all this stuff into Tesla, right? And then there's another company that comes along, Einstein. And Einstein's got a better, better electric program, vehicle, a better and product, all- better everything. She's gonna shut that shit down, down, and she has the. She's supposed to represent the, the people. people. She represents her own motherfucking interests. Yep, her own pockets. That's yep. what she is. I'm yeah. representing my pockets. pockets. <laughs> and this is this is what happened. We saw this Bush. Bush. I feel still legitimately feel like took us to war to make on, money on the back of this whole scheme right here. Yes, sir. Well, like, I mean, it just so happens that the Bush family and the Bin Laden family have been friends for. Decades, decades on decades. It's kind of weird, and and the the whole the government contracting, how they bought that shit up in droves, not even during the war, prior to the war, mm-hmm. already owned hella. And it's like, how deep does that go down? You know, how many people do you get in your little group? You say, look, I'm gonna try and get us to go to war. It's gonna be tricky, but if you buy into these, these, and these, you stand to make tons of fucking money, right? And and depending just, how deep you go into that investigation, uh, you might end up with a bullet deep in the back of your oh, motherfucking head. Facts, facts, like because yep. like you said, infinite resources, infinite ability, and so it's it's crazy, and it's so cool to see the little guy win for once. The the guy like again, thanks to the internet, man, the democratization of mm-hmm. everything. Little man swinging uh, is is you know we got big power now because we can coordinate and we can organize and and it's happening on a grand scale but this is not a good thing you know just being on like it's it's kind of like we were talking about with zuckerberg that one time with the the mike Pen- or with the trump situation mm-hmm. like we'll take the short term win you know but in the long grand scheme of things we might it's be censorship yeah. it, it, right yeah. you know it sucks this is what this situation is um this is cool. It's fun to see him stick to the man, but we don't want a system where a small group of people can manipulate and just, you know what I mean? Like now that yeah. it, it was already bad when the billionaires were doing it. Now, if we can, any Reddit group can do it, any work, you know, cohort, any, anybody yeah. who can. And they even themselves. admitted it. They said like 4chan found a Bloomberg terminal. Right. And anybody who knows anything about 4chan knows that is the haven of white supremacy, Nazism in modern day America yeah. and stuff like that. So if 4chan gets a hold of something like this mm. and can manipulate our market yeah. or anonymous is they're more commonly known, mm. like who wants anonymous controlling the stock market? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm not saying I want Nancy Pelosi to control the stock market. I don't, really know who i want to control the stock market but <laughs> i know i don't want anonymous doing yeah. it and i don't want reddit doing it and i don't want nancy yeah. pelosi doing it. this is why people have such a problem with speculation you know and, and bankers or institute the one percent like this is why people are so furious with them because um if you build the company right like you build gamestop or something like that you have to you're you're engaging in economic commerce like yeah. i'm getting a, a valuable product to me in exchange for my dollars uh when i just bet on gamestop going up or down what did i do for you it's financial terrorism you know <laughs> and then people are like well that's supplying the capital to for the businesses to do the thing yada yada there's plenty of ways to get capital without just like betting it, the the fact is here you could short a stock 140% if you can short it more than there is stocks, then that alone tells you that that's it's not a, a game based on having investment dollars. Now, I don't know. You know, I'm not an economist yeah. here or nothing like that. You know, I don't necessarily know how the stock market works in all its intric- intricacies. But that's just I see where people have a problem there. Like where if you short GameStop or something, you and you create its d- demise through your influence and all that stuff. You destroyed a company. You made billions of dollars. How, where did that leave the everybody else who's a part of the system? Yeah. You know? We just got gamed. Well, that's what happens when you're in the 99%.
yeah, you get game. Get you get game. And that's why we we go off on these like tangents of like wealth disparity. I think nobody really has a problem with the fact that certain people are wealthy and certain people are not. That's just the fact of life. But when you have people who are getting extremely gut wrenching wealthy off of something so trivial as this of just like I like this today. It looks like greed. Versus that. It you know, like I was that. reading up on Occupy Wall Street, and that's one of the things that they were mm. talking about. They were talking mm. about, like, what caused it. Mm. And one of the key words there was, like, market manipulation and greed. Mm-hmm. And that's why the people who organized that protest and who were involved in it, that's essentially that was their core tenet. Yeah. Was, like, anti-greed. you guys. Anti-greed. Yeah, anti-greed, anti-corruption. Mm-hmm. I would say that um, – I don't think that you can really apply it to greed just because you can be the most greedy person in the world and that wouldn't raise your income a single penny, which is a line that I stole from Thomas Sowell. But you actually just because you're greedy doesn't mean that you know what you need to know to invoke these market manipulations to build a company like you can be the greediest motherfucker on the planet and be poor as fuck just because you're greedy doesn't necessarily mean that you have a lot of money. And so I think that just attributing the quality of greed to people that have a lot of money like i don't think that they're correlated really yes, as much but as people think i think what, what it more so was was when the one percent is greedy when those people with billions of dollars do let that become one of their core tenets yeah. you know greed then it becomes like they have the wealth and the power to manipulate much more so than a greedy guy who lives in a one-bedroom apartment fact like yeah. like right here for this instance for you know it, it, this is the one where you say, "Ah, good game," you know, like you got us. We we gotta take we're gonna take one on the chin, you know. Yeah. Like we've t- we've dealt a walloping blow to you guys so many times over hundreds of years. You guys got us, but instead it's like now you want to bitch about regulation. Now you want to bitch about like, well, this is unfair and stuff. That's the type of greed that we just like. Are you are you clowning right now, dog? Like, are you serious? Like that you would so quickly stand. up? against everything that you perpetuated before when it was working in your favor it's sore losing yeah you know, that's yeah. greed that's corruption it's like we don't like it when it's happening to us but we'll very willingly do it to y'all as long as we're on the paying side it's garbage to me you know? yeah i don't like it. it's um i mean it's pretty i think that that's like the i'm not surprised by that at all like uh-huh. the fact that they came out was like we need more regulations about this like yeah of course like if if you're the guy standing there losing millions of dollars, you don't want that to happen. Like, I, and I, you know, I don't think that many people are mature enough to even, you know, old billionaire dudes or whatever. They're, they're not mature the, enough to sit there and be like, ah, they got us. No, we did. The they're going to turn around and be like, Occupy fuck Wall, that. Occupy Wall Street. We did the same thing. We say, yo, this is bullshit with these bankers and these uh, investment institutions guys are doing. We want regulation, but nothing comes. Yeah. Nothing comes. But these guys, I, I guarantee there'll be a law next month. There'll be oh, a yeah. law next month. Absolutely. Because they're just going to call all their homies up here and make it happen, and that's the bullshit. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. bullshit. Yeah, the, the bullshit is that even though we joke about the power to the players and Reddit doing all these things, they're just going to go yep. squish it, and they're going to be like, hey, facts. don't let that happen again, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, facts. <laughs> and I, I think that if you are somebody who is doing this like a retail trader and you're in the market – these things that you got to understand, you know, like I got homies who've over the years have been like, oh, Bitcoin is this and Bitcoin's that. I said, you don't know what Bitcoin is yet. They haven't decided what Bitcoin's yet. Ooh. So when they decide, then you'll know. But the idea that, you know, until they press the button on because at any minute, any minute, they'd be like, yo, we're not fucking with this Bitcoin shit anymore. Delete. Shut it right? down. Shut it down completely. Delete. Yeah, they'll just make a law that says, says, you know, you can't accept Bitcoin as a as a payment for as things. A, as a currency or whatever. And then or, they'll come out with their, you know, Facebook slash government coin Libra. Yeah. And they'll be like, this new Libra <laughs> shit is what you want. It's not going to be on that use. blockchain shit, but it's the same thing as Bitcoin. Yeah, it's Wells like, Fargo coin. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, exactly. uh, <laughs> it's like those fucking commercials. I've been seeing commercials, right, uh, where it's like uh, – Samuel Jackson for Capital One, mm. you know, like what's in your wallet, yep. all that stuff, right? You know the Honey model of coupons, like the little attachment mm. on your web browser, Honey. Oh, that, okay, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. it like and it'll send you coupons. Yeah, and stuff Capital One's doing shopping. that now. Yeah, they really. took the whole model and they were just like they literally like word for word, word took their model and they got Samuel Jackson pitching that shit in commercials yeah, yeah. all day long now. Yeah, and just, I'm just I mean, like. Y'all motherfuckers stole honey. They'll yeah, just suck it right you up. Just stole money. You just took well, uh, uh, it's the, a, the it's, concept it's, of it. Yeah, it's tough because none of that stuff falls under intellectual property. I'm not saying it does. That's just a methodology of of 
advertising, marketing, like that's and so you know, same like with you Bitcoin. see the same thing. Well, you same see the same Bitcoin. thing with Instagram. Like I thought that it was yep. really funny. Instagram has Real. just been absorbing everything. They were like, Oh, that, that Snapchat shit? Yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna absorb that. Twitter absorbed it too. Oh that oh that that TikTok shit, we're gonna absorb that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so you know, Facebook, kind of Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat all have stories now, and yeah, they're exactly the same. They yeah. just call it different things yeah. because you gotta you gotta uh, stay with the innovation of everybody else. If, yep. if other people start putting computers in their cars, you better figure out how to start putting a computer in your car real quick or some shit like that. So I, I feel that you know, in the absorption of the shit, but still, it's just funky. Uh, but if you're if you're a retail trader and you're like doing this on the subreddit and stuff, I know it is enticing to get in, you know. But I would o- also remember like it's different to point out the fact that there's an illuminati and then understanding how they're working on you you know and like what what powers they really do have Mm -hmm. and it's easy to get um because okay they're manipulating you too but now this group of redditors could easily manipulate Manipulate you in the same way right like who decides when it's time to actually sell off your stuff yeah this this your gamestop stock yeah right like like, everybody's like we're not selling hold tight hold the line you know push it further really stick it to them and i'm like okay but eventually like the only way you make money is by cashing out like you can't just hold on to it forever and who's going to decide when that time is to pull the plug and so the thing is like these this Reddit, I'm not saying this is what they're doing, but I'm just saying they could. They could push that, push that, push that, but a small core tenant of them too could sell be like, all, all right, it's time to sell, guys. Uh, like, yeah, I would not movement. be surprised if we found out in the future that the Redditor that posted the original post that kind of got this whole ball rolling made lots of money. Oh, he did? I would not be surprised. He turned um, $2 million into $11 million. There you go. Since, uh, That's, I mean – Multiple hundreds. No, of not percent. not two million. Uh, f- like a couple thousand. Like 50, I saw something like a sixteen hundred dollar increase in the stock or something like yeah. that. Yeah, in the value of it. It's literally the biggest jump that GameStop has ever had. Like up or down, it it, it literally just changed the whole course. Uh, people, it's people practically on, overnight. Yeah, people on Twitter were sending or uh, screen capping and sharing testimonials from people who were like. Hey, you know, I only had two hundred dollars, but I, I took the bet and I bought into it. Now I'm buying my mom a car yeah. and I'm paying off my student loans. One hundred percent. You know, there's you cats see a lot who of made that. millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because yeah. I mean, same thing with Bitcoin this year too. Like if you were in Bitcoin uh, the first time, anytime, anytime something like this bursts, this is where a good opportunity to make tons of money is. But that's why it's, people are so enticed, right? Is like if you can be at in the know. You know, if you can be in the know of like this person's going to sell two million market share of of this tomorrow or Tesla's going to come out with this announcement the day after. If you could be on that wave before everybody else, you get to ride that all the way to the top. And that's what everybody's Mm -hmm. trying to do is trying to be that one step ahead of each other. And, and sometimes just manufacturing that step if you if you want to. So that's the scary part that you were bringing up is manufacturing that step because we don't want. All, every different dark corner of the internet being able to manipulate our stock market in that way. Like, yeah. I see the point of, of some sort of, but like you said, they've been doing it this whole they've time. They've been doing it this whole time. They've so been doing it this whole time. You can't be mad when the internet gets a hold of it and gets at it. But, I mean, look look what happened with the housing market crash, you know? That was a, a similar situation where you had this hot ticket item that they had created called um, these short sales on houses, junk bonds, right? Um, dude, it's so weird when they... God, we could talk about this all day. The financial system creates these products, products, and it could be anything like this. It could be a group of junk bonds. It could be a short option call on a on a certain stock or, you know, fucking whatever. Like, I'm going to buy it at this price, wait till this price goes up to here, then sell here, and that's like its own product. Or like, you know, I can buy your, your bonds, but I could also buy your stocks and your whatever, currencies, you know, anything. They have a million products. In this housing market thing they create this product where they're going to take all the highest risk bonds or highest loans. risk loans package them together package them under very stout stable loans and call them this other thing right and that became the new hot ticket people are like yo we're selling these things we don't even know what they're what they do or call it it's just junk bonds cdos we're, yeah we're all into this now and then so just they to clarify just, they're not bonds they were loans but yeah. they were loans but still okay so they were they were selling these things like fucking hot cakes knowing damn well that they were all crap, like that, that I'm selling you crap here, you know, um, yeah. and that this crap will blow up in your face, and we're literally going to play hot potato with it. We're just going to play hot potato with it. Whoever gets stuck with the bag at the end, you're lost. So the, the housing market guys are doing this. 
You don't give a shit, right? Whatever. People are getting millions, billions. They're making all this money until one day you don't got a house anymore. Until you, you didn't take a junk loan. You didn't, you just, you've been, you've been, you lived down the street from Sally Sue. You're just living in your little three bedroom home and the house, the price of your house starts shooting up through the roof and you're like, hell yeah, look at this, babe. We're, we're making money. And then one day it just starts tanking and you're like, wait, what happened? I thought we was making money. You didn't sell your house because you didn't know what was going on. You didn't. Do, you're just living, and then now you're homeless. You know, now you're the the worth of your home is trash. Maybe you're retiring that year. You you now have no retirement, all because somebody wanted to play the game. You know, and that's do you, do you remember? Um, I I remember actually watching President Obama talk about the housing market crash in two thousand and eight. Um when we were in iraq like i remember mm-hmm. seeing like i had a tiny little tv in my little containerized housing unit that yeah. got afn yeah. and i remember coming back to my room turning it on and there's the president talking about the worst financial crisis in history yeah, and we were living at baghdad international airport mm-hmm. so it was like what a strange way to learn that the american economy is tanking mm-hmm. you know it's like, another like country. yeah it's just sitting in a sitting in a war zone where like, we're, do I get to come home? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what am I gonna come home to? Like, you know, because like they were saying, like this is like the Great Depression, and yeah. I'm like, all I could think about with the Great Depression was like motherfuckers waiting in bread lines, <laughs> and I'm like thinking like I'm eating pretty well out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, KBR like, is goodness. feeding us pretty good out there. So I was thinking to myself like, I wonder if my mama gonna be sitting back home in a bread. Do I need to send them money? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, right. It tough. was it was a very weird, and I. You know, uh, very unaware of how the world worked at that time. Yeah. Even though, you know, we were, you know, in a war zone and worked for the military, all this stuff. I was very unaware Same. of any of the thing- stock market. I didn't follow politics, Same. any of that. You were just shit. doing what they were telling you. Yeah, I was yeah. just. They were like, hey, you don't got nowhere to go. This military show will work out for yeah. you. And yeah, then and then once you were in the military, they're like, hey, we need you to go out yeah. to this other country. And you we were like, order. all right, cool. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, and this is the problem is like, you know. It's tough for me because I I do believe in personal responsibility a lot, but like the people, a lot of the people that ended up losing, like a lot of people's value of their houses just in a reflection of the housing market tanking, that went down. But a lot of the people that lost their houses were people who took out these bad loans that were in the yeah. that were in the CDOs. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, some of these things like I remember learning about ninja loans, yep. no income, no job loans. Yep. It's like you bought a five hundred thousand dollar house. You didn't have a job. Mm-hmm. How did you think that that was gonna play out? And and uh, you know it's unfortunate because these people were predatory. They were preying on people who couldn't understand the complexity of these new loans. Like you just said, John might have accidentally took him one of those. Took loans him one of these we loans. Just don't John's know. Yeah, I you taken don't one. know like, what's going on. Know. The guy tells you, "I can get you into a this house. house." And you're like, and you're hell, like hell, "Hell yeah!" I've been trying to get my family in a house for ten years. Couldn't make it happen. But this dude, who seems like a nice guy, who seems like he's doing you a favor, is helping you out. But that's not really what's happening. He's helping himself out because mm-hmm. he doesn't care whether or not. And that's the point. Like, mm-hmm. if you look into interviews and stuff, they'll tell you, like, sometimes these people paid. Sometimes they paid the whole thing. Oh, they held it down. Yeah. Sometimes they, you know, sometimes they didn't make a single payment. Yeah. It was hard to tell. But I got the commish as soon as the dotted line was signed. That was their incentive. That their was their incentive. incentive. Was their incentive was the commish. commish. And, uh, and, you know, I think that I need to, personally for myself, I needed to make sure that I just state that these incentives were set up by the government Mm -hmm. 1994 housing bill bill clinton set up these these incentives and and pressure on banking systems to start giving loans to people that they would normally not give loans to Mm -hmm. because of intersectionality reasons and so the bank was like well we're not really cool with that and bill clinton was like it's all good we're gonna back these loans so if they don't pay the government will reimburse you for the loan and so they were like okay and then they just started giving the loans to anybody because it doesn't matter if that person sells or not. You get the money as soon as it's done. And like you said, it's backed, it's secure. And then so it's up to the government care, to yeah. collect their money because mm-hmm. now the government owns that loan. Mm-hmm. And it's like the government doesn't need to do there that. They so get their money from taxing you anyway. There are yeah. so many <laughs> examples of stuff like this where it's like they someone goes in originally with a good intention. With yeah. a good intention. And then as it gets filtered through the process, people are like, well, I can make money by doing right, this or right, I can make yeah. money by doing this. And yeah. eventually when it gets to Bill Clinton, he's like, that's a good idea. <laughs> Look at how good I am for Look, black I want, folk. I, want, I got so many black folk uh, houses. I want to get, I wanna get I a second a term. Point. I want to get a second term. I'm going to give everybody houses. Houses, whatever. And then, and then boom, you know. <laughs> 
And the problem blows is up in that his fucking face. The problem is no, it didn't though. That's the point is that like, it didn't blow up in Bill Clinton's face. Road, it blew though. up in everybody else's That's face. That's what I'm saying. Like, while Bill Clinton was getting blown by Monica like, Lewinsky uh, again. <laughs> like I was thinking in my head, it always comes back to the fucking uh, Clintons. <laughs> you know, like, it always comes back. But to that's the, the problem with these economic policies and stuff like that. Uh, really, with just a lot of the government stuff, is like the policies repercussions don't tend to manifest until 10 years down the line. Mm. And it's hard to make that link all the way back to 1994 mm-hmm. with the housing bill. You don't think about that in 2008. Yeah. You just think, holy shit, these bankers are douchebags. Yeah, and it's like, well, the yeah. bankers are douchebags, but how many people just like in your grocery store are douchebags? Pretty much everybody's a douchebag. So the idea of setting up this uh, system where these douchebags could influence and take advantage of everybody seems kind of not like a good idea just because you want to get people houses. So here's my question then right now. Um, uh, do we do we regulate or do we not regulate this situation? Then? Like, is this a regulation thing? Like, should we be clamping down on, on everybody's ability to do this? Or do we just let it be and be like, this is the way I, it's always been I done? I think the three of us get together, right? Make a Reddit post. And we buy up one of these companies. Just bank. <laughs> just bank. All I was telling people bank. at the beginning of the of Before the coronavirus the- pandemic mm-hmm. to buy um, cruise liner stocks. I was like, hey, this is a good opportunity to make some money because, you know, it's not like cruises are going to go away. Yeah. Ten years from now, people are going to be taking cruises, mm-hmm. and it's not like Carnival's going to go out of business. Mm-hmm. So you might as well like it. This is I saw it. I was like, if I had a lot of extra income at the time, I might have bought some cruise liner stocks because I know they're going to come back. Airliner stock. But the thing is, is that for the answer for the question, I personally, I've always been on the sense that regulation leads to um, unintended consequences. Education leads to empowerment. So I'm against regulation, but I'm pro education. Like we need to teach regular people. Like that if you could have intercepted, if you could have intercepted the families that took those ninja loans and told them about how that loan works and how in six months their their monthly payments going to go from six hundred dollars to fourteen hundred dollars. If you could explain that to them in a way that they can understand it, then let them make their own decision if they want to take the loan or not. It's up to you. But at least they'll have a full grasp about what this person's trying to sell them. Mm. Because I think that the idea of regulating out greed or regulating in altruism is not going to work because people always shirk the system. There's always, you know, these bills are really long. They've got all these loops and inside outs. So people will always find a way to circumvent these regulation barriers that you try to set up. Whereas I think that if you, Try to con- like it's really a, in a matter of instead of trying to force people to be altruistic, you just convince them that that's what they should do, and then you have to let them make their own decisions. Because I think that anytime you engage in forced behavior, you don't tend to get the the outcome that you thought you were going to get. I um I'm I'm with you in this in a certain sense, but uh, at the same time I'm like taking it back to that to that example of like the no income, no job, housing, all this stuff, and you're telling this person, hey. You're taking a mega risk right now. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, I don't get a fuck. I get a house. <laughs> yeah, know? but then like, that's I like, think I don't understand how the education part would like persuade against the incentives. Because like you said, like that's the problem I have. Or not the problem, but that's where the, the big dick daddy player is. Where is the incentive? Yeah. Because like you said, we are capitalistic by nature. We are little rodents who are always going to look for a way to um, advance our position. We want the cheese. We want the cheese. We want to take care of ourselves. We want to advance our position. It doesn't matter if it costs the rest of the Redditors or it costs Big Wall Street or Big Wall Street costs you. They don't care, right? It's like, I want my cheese. I want my little value bean. So for me, I'm looking at it. I'm like, here goes a person. It might persuade some more conscientious people, but there's some people who are – they're just looking at the idea of like I've never had a house before. I can get a house. Um, it's the same way. Like, why would you live paycheck to paycheck? You know, like why wouldn't you invest your money? Why wouldn't you do all these other things that are more beneficial to you? It's not education. It's not that you don't know investing your money can make you more money. There's a lot of other things at play there. Oh it's yeah, like, totally. I I'm, don't see I'm not saying that you're going to get rid of the problems by educating people rather than regulating them. All I'm saying is that from a from a principal point, I, I believe in not forcing behavior because it doesn't actually change their idea about the issue. So you're right. Like if you tell them everything about the ninja loan and they're like, I don't give a fuck. I want to put my family in this house. Fair enough. 
but then don't come crying to the government or the bank or whatever when you can't make the payments and you get foreclosed in six months. And then now you're homeless. Mm. Like, I told you what it was, and you took the risk. And it's just like with lottery tickets. So like, it, everybody buys a lot. Of, some people win. Some nobody, people, nobody a lot of gonna, people don't. Yeah, nobody was going to bail those people out, though. The government was gonna, wasn't going to come in and bail out those families that lost their homes. They were just going to lose their homes. Yeah. So, yeah. like, they didn't come crying to the government. They... They just but what I'm saying is that I, I again I don't think that the government should be allowed to come bail anybody out. Yeah, that's not what individual I'm people or corporations. You don't no yeah. bailouts, no bailouts. Educate yourself, make a decision, stick with the consequences. I love that. I love I love it in principle. I love it in principle. It's a principle, thing. but yeah, it doesn't work in practice because all we do is bail out these companies. Well, that too, but if, if you don't, what happens? Right? Exactly. That's the point, though. Is like I don't know what the solution is, but I know what has happened every single time and that is every time these things have crashed our government has stepped in and be like oh let's give them a couple billion let's dollars it back get them back on their feet yeah let's put it back together yeah this isn't a um the principled nature of the argument would 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 wash over not just stock markets housing market it would wash over all of society mm -hmm. in the sense that like i i don't i i don't think that there's a a place for the government to be helping people not fail because failure is one of the things that you need. It's a signal to the market. You need failure in the market so that everybody knows what's going on, what's not working, what is but working. But then to, to create a solution, though. Like there are said, no uh, solutions. Uh, there are only trade-offs. Well, then to create a trade-off. Because like, here's the thing that you were uh, – that's actually my point is that they are only trade-offs. So you say, uh, well, then that person just loses their home. Like that that's the period to the sentence. But it's not because now – unemployment or, or homelessness has shot up in America by 40%. Let's just, you know, throwing out a random number. Hypothetical. Yeah. 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 Who that we're all interconnected, whether we want to be or not like that, but doesn't just stop there. Now yeah. that the fact that you're homeless, that plays on our economy as a whole. And so it comes back to me regardless. Oh you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Like somebody I'm, then I got a bitch about you sitting outside my little mansion thing and like pissing and shitting on the street. And I'm like, well, you should have a place to go. Well, this all starts, like you said, it all goes back. It all goes back to 1994 where this started and that started and then you did this and then did this. So I, I feel you in the sense of like, you know, what I do hate about regulation is that they always create another unintended consequence. And that's what you're saying. But I still don't think that the solution is just leaving that one consequence to rot. You know, what I mean? I, like, I more so believe that, you know, in the wealthiest nation in the world, we should have some sort of safety net. Mm -hmm. You know, for these people that do hit the bottom, mm -hmm. um, because like like Rob was saying, like the period on the end of the sentence should be after they lost their house. So we help them get back on their feet, period. Mm -hmm. You know, what well, I, mean? I think but that then, it depends on who's holding up that safety net. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're you're saying I think that there should be a safety net. I also think that there should be a safety net. I just don't think that you should force people into paying for that safety net if they don't want to, which is what's happening right now because the government is the safety net. Whereas I in in my ideal society it would be charitable people making the safety net. So when you see homeless people outside your mansion and you don't like that and you're like, these people need a place to go, you don't say, government, give these people a place to go. You just say, I'm going to set up a place for you to go and you can live there and I'm going to help you out. Now, again, this is that's why I said it's a more principled societal thing than it is. Like it would have to be across the entire society before you – and you would have a lot of pain in the meantime. But I think that – we're consistently on this progress of like, there's a boo-boo, put a Band-Aid on it. There's a boo-boo, put a Band-Aid on it. Whereas it's like chronic disease. You can treat the symptoms of the chronic illness, but until you get to the cause of it, you'll just be training symptoms. Mm. You know, you'll just be taking pain medication for your back for the rest of your life until you die, unless we're gonna you keep fix your back. Potato. Yeah, we're just, just going to keep handing it off. Sometimes it's the people, sometimes, sometimes it's the, the market. Yeah, sometimes, you know, and so it's like, hey, why don't we all just take a handful of this and help with it? Instead of being like, hey, you, you take this. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm washed of it, but now you have to deal with all of it. Or, and then you hand it off to him. And now he's got all of it and we're clear. And it's like, well, why don't we all just take like a third of it? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and it's like people want to do that through taxes. People want to do that. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. But I think that as my answer, I just think that regulation leads to more problems than people realize. Um, and I mean – America is the most charitable country that's ever lived, uh, that's ever existed. I mean, we give more money than any – we give more money in charity than some countries make in an entire year. But we also have 
So I mean, so I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I would love to see how charitable re- uh, charity is a percentage point. If if I'm being honest, like, a percentage like point of what you saying? Oh, America gives away billions or trillions, but if it's still only point zero five percent of what America has, then I would not call you a charitable person just because you have the popular. You know what I mean? Like that's well, like saying that's I should win the election because sim- I had the popular vote. Well, you know, it's a very simplistic way of looking at it uh, because some people give. A majority of that charity is and a lot of people don't give any and so it's like it's it's not evenly distributed across the country but, but i'm but i'm just saying like as a principle again if you want to look at the country you're like well america is one of the most charitable countries i mean compared to we're also the most richest country in, yeah. the, in the world so i like, mean you, you can't give sense. away something that you don't have well so that would make sense it's so. just looking at statistics two different ways yeah. yeah and one of the other things i wanted to bring up too that 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 i think about is like you know in a world where the government won't help the people it's up to charities to help the people in the, in that world which when you think about it on that level it sounds great but i think sounds about terrible pr- well no i think about it as like well all these different charities exist so if all these charities exist and they have all this money why can't they help these people well sometimes those charities are like the christian mission mm-hmm. and sometimes they'll help you as long as you're not a muslim mm-hmm. or they'll help you as long as you're not gay mm-hmm. so if you're on the street and you don't meet their qualifications well then Sorry, Bucko. Unless you convert to my religion and uh, go through conversion therapy, you're not gonna get these. You're not gonna get this yeah. help. Yeah, Which I mean, is true. Uh, well, I was just gonna say, I, I, I don't, I don't pretend like there aren't people that will have criteria as to who gets what money. But you do that too. Sometimes you give a homeless guy some money. Sometimes you don't. It's hard to it's hard to quantify why you I mean, do and that, that criteria like is that. already built into the government system where the government's like, well, you don't you're not rich enough for, to get our help. So like there's always going to be a criteria for whether or not there's help. And I think that that's where my caveat to that system is. I love the uh, the altruistic model of like every, each one help one type situation. But I think that that's where it doesn't work at scale. You know, it, it doesn't no, no, it work. It only works on small organizational groups where you you see somebody that you care about that's struggling. You'll go out of your way. Yeah. To help and them. But I want to make stranger. a distinction that I wasn't talking about charities. I was talking about being charitable because charities like nonprofit organizations are also have very poor incentives. Like, you know, you look at a nonprofit, multiple nonprofit organizations. They have people on their boards that make millions of dollars a year. And it's and so it's funny because people talk about how capitalism's so bad, and well, it's like, well, these not if profits the problem, then what? Why aren't these nonprofit organizations able to come in and just fix all these issues that the the, the profit greedy companies are are siphoning all the money from? It's like, oh, that's right, because the guy who runs the the American Red Cross gets ten million dollars a year or some shit like that. Mm. That's where your charity money's going. It's going mm. to pay the board so that he can decide who gets what and stuff. Like it's it's a more local kind of thing like you were saying like, it doesn't work at scale mm-hmm. but i don't think that the government really works at scale either mm-hmm. like i think that you have to take you have to take some sort of responsibility for your community around you mm-hmm. um in a sense and i think that by shirking that responsibility to just this amorphous idea of all of society is not really the way to do it. Like I feel, I the way I view that is a shirking of responsibility. Well, what jumps out to me is like the idea that Amazon didn't pay anything in taxes last year, mm-hmm. and if they had, that would be an enormous sum of money. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that sum of money potentially from that one company could like do things like end homelessness. Mm-hmm. It could or, or fee. I'm I'm not saying it should. I'm just saying that number that exists, which is the n- amount of taxes they didn't pay would do that one company one big ass company which is true but then what about the value added in amazon outside of tax dollars you know what i mean like you get taxed on an individual level because you don't contribute anything to society outside of that you know what i'm saying well you're the worker right that's you do that for your own personal benefit though like you but it contributes to society okay so yeah i mean you're giving your work in in this sense but i mean like your well i mean i guess you're right i mean i guess you're right you're yeah you're everybody's your contributing work. but yeah. well i'm just saying like the reason that they those big companies like that don't pay tax dollars is because if i overtax you then you'll take your company and you'll put it in a different country and i will lose more economically by you not having your company there than i would by this small lump sum of tax dollars that i get my question plus would be, i just don't uh, go ahead oh i was just gonna say my question would be then like should amazon not pay taxes well, I'm just saying, like, that's why they're not paying taxes. You know, it's like it, it it's to 
you would wish that they would because in the short term it feels good to get that big lump sum of cash but what i'm saying is what was their economic value to us as a society minus that like if you add that up with or without taxes which one do you think is greater you know and and and, and assuming that those are up against each other like you would love for them to stay in america and pay taxes so that we get both of that value but the the reality of the situation is they have sway over the system just like we gain sway with the with the popular um that they could just well we're not gonna play your but game they, anymore. they pay taxes in all these other countries in europe in asia amazon pays taxes to mm. to do business there but mm. they don't pay taxes here well mm. they just understand the incredibly loophole system of taxation exactly. in this country and i think that one thing that we need to point out though is that you're saying that those taxes could go to helping homelessness. I'm not saying they will. But that's not, yeah, that's not necessarily what they will do. They might just get that as a subsidy to Raytheon yeah, to or build some say, sort of crazy yeah. big-ass thing. So it's like all of a sudden now you don't want that money to be in the government's hands because they didn't do with it what you wanted them to do. Yeah, I was simply making and that I, point. Yeah, and I think that really what it comes down to is that when you – like a company like Amazon is a good target for people. You know, like when That's you hear, why I use them as an example. yeah, like yeah, when they, you hear when you hear that they don't pay taxes on you know two hundred billion dollars of revenue or whatever. That's like what the fuck, and I'm getting taxed, you know, almost fifty goddamn percent or some crazy, sh which is insane, which is ridiculous. And then you look around at all the stuff that the government spends your tax money on, and it's like. Well, why would I want to take Amazon's money in taxes if the government's not going to do anything that I think is good with it in the first place? You know, if you if you buy things from Amazon, then you're getting value from them. And why would you want to lessen their ability to give you value by having all this capital to reinvest in their company or whatever it is that they're going to do with it by – giving it to the government to do stuff i find under, it very interesting the that assumption the, that the government does help and, yeah. and i want to i want to remind it does you sometimes. because it does sometimes that that's just the caveat i want to make because we often bash the government as like having no good like, at all yeah to like society a, whatsoever and that's not necessarily that's not true. true either um it does do good things it does a lot of fuck things too but um it gave me my health care yeah, 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 yeah. What the government did? Yeah. Mm, I feel you. I feel you. Um, it like still, it still does every. Yeah, every time I get sick, the government, the government takes care of me. They took my gallbladder out. You mm -hmm. know, they very small copays. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Well, I mean, the government set up the system for all that, but I mean, the rest of the people paid for that. It's not yeah, like no, the I'm government paid for that. Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, the the. But they set up a system. The Veterans Administration is who takes care of me because mm -hmm. I'm a veteran. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's a, a branch of our. our like the government, government at least decided to put a portion of the money. Some people would argue not enough, but whatever towards helping. Well, they also the established yeah. they also established the Veterans Administration through a bill, through a law that said, like, you're going to supply health care mm -hmm. to veterans. Mm -hmm. Like the government said, that's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And they established that that yeah. entire. Yeah, they've done that for private citizens and stuff like that, forcing companies to give health, but the point health is insurance they do, to other they do people. Do good things, yeah, I'm right saying like the point is the government takes care of my health care mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because of my service to the country. Yeah, yeah. So it's part of your compensation package. <laughs> yes. saying, they also really pay disability. They also for yeah. you to well, I, again, I, I just want to make sure that we're making this core this this distinction. The government's not paying for any of that. All of America is paying for that. The government's just the guy. He's just the middleman. The government's taking it from America and putting it into but your what we're saying is right. under that, that system. Process. There, that person who makes the decisions isn't always just taking your money and putting it in their pockets, right? So sometimes they do make a decision that is for the benefit of the people. You know, whether or Some not people. we as individuals agree, there has been we elect these people, these elected officials that we put in to these offices then decide we want to make this bill and then that bill ends up helping people like me yeah they, i think the really problem for me is incentive structures and all that stuff but it's the manipulation and it's the greed that's what they say it's yeah, the greed corruption. it's the it's the for me it's when you are knowingly gaming the system like you know like when you know that this is going to cause pain or strife for a, a large majority of people but you put that aside for your own individual gain, I think, is what kills us the most, man, is it's not the charity and what we give. It's what we're taking from each other that I think is what hurts us the most, you know, um, whether that be mm -hmm. our taxes or whether that be our freedoms or um, like you said, it's like harboring knowledge and using it maliciously against you. I think that that's what the one percent do. 
in any system, right? Like now they're going to use instead of thinking about using their thumb screw ability of the government to help everybody, they're going to twist it to help themselves. And I think that, yeah. that it's that self-satisfying nature. I just I just don't like that there's a thumb screw there of the government for them to do that. Like, uh, you're right. If without the government thumb screw there, there will be some people that won't be able to turn it to help people, but it also won't be there for it to turn to hurt people either. And so um, I think that really – because you're right. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of good that gets done by people in the government and protection, like, though, too. Like, you got to understand, like, there's there is roles for the government. Like, the government has roles. Like, I'm not like an anarchist or something like that. Like, an anarcho capitalist that thinks like there shouldn't be any government for anything. But I think that when you start, like, let me ask you a question. Do you think that you can regulate away people's desire to gain at the expense of others? N okay no no you cannot well, you cannot regulate against that will to do it but you can set up parameters that create a fair game right I, that was my follow-up question now do you think that the that the regulations that you set up can be so wide scoping and so ironclad without removing people's individual freedoms that will allow or that will disallow people to act on that will to gain at others expense so that that so you're saying I think do I think you could actually set it up that way? Well, because the reason I'm setting it up like this is because you can set you can set up a per, like a parameter that helps that keeps people from hurting people in one way, but it establishes a new way to hurt people. And and I think that it's 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 hard to calculate if you're getting a net gain, if you're getting a net loss or if it's staying the same. You know what I mean? I, I get what you're saying. And I think that's why I've never liked the idea of, like, uh, help usually is what gets misconstrued. But stop that doesn't usually, right? So, uh, well, maybe it does in the sense that, like, they created prisons and then somebody, like, started to profit off of prisons. Well, yeah, people said, well, people yeah, said like, to the bank, Bill Clinton's and those politicians and said to the banks, stop not giving loans to um, minorities and, and, and less income people. And so they were like, that's a good thing. You're going to stop redlining these districts. You're going to stop not giving loans to these low-income neighborhoods. But I look at that as help. I look at that as, like, not trying to stop you from stopping doing something. It's to, like, allow these people to be a part of your, 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 thing. your thing. Right. But then that sets up a scenario. Corrupted. Yeah, that sets up a scenario where people can come in and create this new thing, like a CDO, and they can make all these bets on the, these wild speculations, and that creates this huge but bubble. But when I say, like— And then the bubble leads to millions of people losing their homes. And so it's like— your goal was to get more people in homes, and yet somehow at the end of it, we've got lots of people out of homes. So, like you said, it was to help people get something. But if my regulation here is like the start of the conversation was no more insider trading, and I mm. realize that that's not like a real law, but it's a hypothetical. Uh, but hypothetical, like my point is like you're not allowed to short sell if unless you have X amount of like skin in the game type shit, mm -hmm. right? Or something like that where it because the problem that I have. Everything you're saying is totally true, right? But my problem is they're not even trying to create a fair game. Yeah, right? it's, no, of they're just not. trying the to point. protect their their own is, shit. Whoever's yeah. got yeah. the special interest that whoever's holding the stick at the moment gets to make all the rules in their own personal favor, and that's the thing that's fucking trash. You know, it's like yeah, it's, yeah. I was gonna say all I can think about this whole time we've been talking is like, man, I wish someone could design the perfect game because there are very well designed games like chess. You know, chess isn't the perfect game because there's a play and a draw type of thing. So there's always going to be like that 51 percent to 49 percent, you know, sure. like that house bet or whatever sure. the house, whatever. Sure. But damn, man, we can get real fucking close to the perfect yeah. game. I know we can because yeah. I've played per games that right. are almost that the are perfect just, game. You know what I mean? Like None have of them have been anywhere as complicated as a as a society. That's what I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> I, but I don't have think that the you can. I don't think of that we do. If you could do it on a small scale, you could do it on a grand scale. Like That's said, not necessarily are, true. I mean. It is my belief that we can come together as a society and design a society that plays in such a way where the game is as fair as possible. And I, you do I, believe, I believe in that. that. You do believe in that. I do you, believe in that. I just like, don't think that that comes through the government. Well, like it comes through the people which manipulate the government. Like you said, the government is people too. Like right. these are just people too. So it's I representations think it of can the people. come well, through Well, this that. is how California has, on one hand, has some of the highest taxes, the second highest taxes other than New York State on cigarettes. And yet somehow also subsidizes tobacco farmers in California. It's because the game's rigged. 
Is it? Or is it just two separate groups pulling the government lever? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, the game has a loophole, or it is a, there is a broken strand within the game well, that allows I, you to manipulate. Because the game isn't there to service the people. Like you said, it's there to service the tobacco industry and whoever is anti-tobacco industry in that. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying there is if there was no lever to do that, then the tobacco people and the anti-tobacco people would have to just compete against each other instead of being able to go to the government and say, we want you to make it harder on the tobacco people. And then the tobacco people come over and be like, we want you to make it easier for the tobacco people. And so I'm saying like you have these so many groups pulling the government in so many different directions that there's no way that it could ever get to making a solid progress on any one thing. I feel you that. But well, like you need a rules book, though. Like, you, like you, in order to create this game that we were talking about, like every game that you've ever played has rules. rules there is yeah. no game where there is no, like, I can play a game and then you can play a game however you want to, right? And that's the problem that we have when you don't have that referee or that mediator or that person who's supposed to keep the honest status quo of it. It's that, like, you think that they're running rampant right now with the laws? Imagine without them. Like, you know, like imagine how much insider and colluding yeah. and all that stuff that happens when the laws do not exist. It's not it's not about having no laws. It's about the fact that right now Walter Williams has a really interesting way of like an example of this. And he says, what if we played poker tonight and the rules were living? And he uses this in a, in a reference to when people say, well, the, the Constitution is a living document. Yeah. And people and he in his response, he would say, well, that means that we don't have a Constitution because if the Constitution is the rule book and we're allowed to change it whenever we want, then how is it that we have rules? And, and right now what I'm saying is that through the government, if the government is the one making the rules, but it's also able to change the rules at will, then the people who can influence the government are able to just change the rules however yeah, they want. That's and so that's what you're saying. I, I agree with you. We need fixed rules. Yeah. We need a fixed rule book that says this is how we or operate in society. Or equal say in creating the rules. Yeah. Or right? equal like, say in creating rules the rules. A rules committee. Yeah. Like, I, think like, about, I think about the game that I love, and they have a rules committee. Yeah. And when something happens, like say some new thing is introduced to the game, and it becomes – overpowered or, out of or it balance, becomes right. out of balance mm -hmm. then the rules committee steps in and says okay to get the game back to a healthy state we think that we should ban this one thing mm -hmm. and people have to agree that Let's rules committee has to say okay we think that might help mm -hmm. let's do it on a suspension basis mm -hmm. so then they say for the next two three months we're going to see how the meta develops so from this suspension yeah. mm -hmm. and then they come back again and the rules committee says it's helping let's ban it there's That's one of the biggest things thing, though, too, right? Like in that commit, because we have this. This is what the government is. So this is what. The, but right, <laughs> they want the best balanced game, though. It's not about I want to win the game of Magic. The rules committee is not also trying to win the championship tournament and Great like trying to. Point. You know what I mean? Like they just Great want point. the game to be balanced and fair for anybody who wants to step. They up want and the compete. players to to get yeah. the best experience it, they can. Right? Instead of like we just want to win the game. So I want to ask you guys that: Do you think that we would be better off with like a di a direct democracy rather than this kind of? Um, right now, it seems to me, as far as I understand, we have a sort of amalgamation of a. A federalist republic with democracy kind of mixed in there mm. um and so you know a lot of people have a problem with like the electoral college and the fact that somebody can be win the popular vote but not win the presidency and stuff like that like yep. do you think it would be better now that the population is a little bit more spread out and stuff like that it's still very concentrated in certain areas but do you think it'd be better with like a direct democracy then where everybody has an equal say in I would, the, in the I'd like to take a little crack at that. Now, I have a, a, you know, a lizard brain, so I don't <laughs> understand all of it as, as much because I don't really study, like when you said we have a federalist. and the, Like, I understand most of those terms. But in my brain, uh, it seems like when, when Republicans literally can't win the popular vote, um, to then win the presidency twice is thumb on the scale. Now – I don't completely understand the Electoral College, but I understand mm -hmm. it enough to know that there are super delegates and all these other like really confusing filters and layers mm -hmm. that the upper class use to make the decision for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that we could have a more representative mm -hmm. uh, system in place. I don't know exactly how to go about that, mm -hmm. but like I think about it with all of these things, all these questions about regulation and economics. Um, we have think tanks for everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have think tanks for, you know, all these aspects of our the society. The military R&D that's happening right now exactly. is like, insane. Like, the fact that, you know, we can 
in the I mean, when did they create the Blackbird in the 80s? Mm-hmm. So like we figured out how to 70s and d- yeah to make stealth bombers mm-hmm. all the way back then. And mm-hmm. you're telling me we can't figure out how to have a representative society that works for everybody. Yep. I just think that we don't want to because the incentives aren't there. The incentives right now are f- to have this system in place so that the people at the top who decide these what things the are just going to perpetuate it. Going. their their and then the, the name of the game is either get in this inner circle or or don't like if you can't get into our little cool group and mm. get into the insider knowledge and like make the rules then you're just stuck out there in the uh outer circle so to, to answer your question i believe that we can have a much better fairer game within our governmental uh system so yeah uh, you'd like to lean uh, on the spectrum between monarchy and direct democracy you'd like to lean a little bit more towards or oligarchy and 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 direct democracy i would you'd like, like to, to push it a little bit further towards di- direct democracy i would like to take the money incentives out of our politics with lobbying oh, and things like that i agree i would like to uh create some sort of system in which nancy pelosi can't hear oh shit you want to do an electric vehicle thing i better get all them stocks baby yeah. like I think uh, I think the incentives are wrong. Yeah. Let me in on this. Yeah. Let me uh, Come I on got in. a super spicy take on this one. Okay, uh, I think that GameStop has just proven our ability to have a direct democracy. Okay, mm-hmm. I do not think that that was possible twenty twenty five years ago. But neo internetalism, maybe mm, neo internetalism for you, those of you that like, don't know. We started this conversation. That's what this this whole topic is about. It's about the democratization of so many different things. Mm-hmm. We're seeing that in our government influence, in our Bitcoin. financial influence, and in Bitcoin. Just all these things. Where even this dude here. Let me pull up this this thing right here. Where this dude. It's a CEO of a damn of Nasdaq talking. And listen to these people and look at how they're starting to view. So, which we've always known, like us as millennials have always known the power of this platform, but these guys are just now catching on to this and, and how serious it really is. They're gonna do everything in their power to go after you and people like me who are not on the side of the billionaire elite. As I laid out yesterday, they are already going into overdrive on CNBC, who started off yesterday by inviting the literal CEO of the NASDAQ on to call for more regulation. Let's take a listen to that again. One of the things that we're talking about is maybe misinformation and and, uh, pump and dumps, and it's occurring on social media again. It just, I'm wondering whether it's part of the same problem, the type of regulation that, that uh, that we finally need to uh, to consider, and like I said, uh, we should always have a light touch with regulation. But you're you're seeing the way things can get started again. This is different. Maybe it's Reddit. Maybe it's not Facebook. But you're seeing the the the, the same situation. At this point, it's not about an election. It's not about a uh, an insurrection. But there are interesting things happening that that seem to be spawned to some extent, or at least a, at least blown out of proportion by social media again, Adina. Well, I I do think, though, that as we look at these new technologies that are there available to everyone, including investors, I I think it's also important for regulators to understand that, you know, manipulation is manipulation, whether it's happening through a new technology medium or it's happening through traditional mail. Uh, So I think it's just a matter of making sure that we understand what the behavior is, what's underpinning the behavior, and working appropriately with the regulators to, to, uh, to manage the situation. Okay. Wow. Who would win in a fight? Wow. The entire stock market and the 1% or Redditors with a $600 stimmy check? <laughs> obviously, Redditors with the stimmy check, right? It looks th- like it. So here's my thing. You've seen that guy's obviously flustered, right? It's like that dude, and he's like, it's, not, it's Reddit this time. It's not Facebook. The point I'm trying to make is social media and the internet, just our ability to communicate and move at a cohort. I've noticed this happening since COVID started. Right. Since quarantine, at first it was our hyper um, attention to memes, Tiger King, like all this, th- like this mean that like it was like we were moving as one big school of fish where we're all like, oh, shit, George Floyd stuff. Oh, shit. Tiger King doc. Oh, shit. You know, protest this, that. Like, so we're all starting to move in this collective where we can take our attention and we can all focus it on something if we want to. Right. And now I think that that's the tool that opens up a system where you can directly um, influence these types of things. You know, if we wanted again, if we wanted a system that was fair, we don't want that. But just if we did, you could see where we'd set up something where now something like this happens and we say, 
um, okay, well, here's a bill. Here's the, what we're all presenting it. Everybody log in on this fucking website at this time and put your yes or no answer in, whatever. Make it encrypted on a blockchain so you can only vote once and whatever. And then you take a, a popular vote like that on everything. Is everybody going to vote? No. Is, but could you get millions upon millions of people to or, in, interact with a, a, a system like that? Yes. And could it actually – you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that it could I, open ways for a dem- democracy as we're seeing it now. If people can get on one subreddit and say, we want this to happen to GameStop and then make that happen, then I can't see why we couldn't do that on a bigger scale for our government, too, in the way that we create regulations, laws, um, the, the rules of the game, create a more inclusive committee. Yeah. Oh, OK. So you're just saying lower lower the barrier of entry to something that's easier to get into like a you know it doesn't cost you any money to be a redditor on the subreddit um you know and it may cost you 50 bucks to buy 50 dollars worth of gamestop stocks whereas because right now you're just describing the system that we already have which is that in certain in interests influence the people who make the rules but the problem is that the the rules the way to get into that group of people who influence the rules is that it's capped at a very well, right high now price. like you said we have a representative system not so a direct i don't i don't i don't vote on what i think should happen i vote on somebody who i think will think make the that. right decision but using the gamestop example is kind of hard because it had nothing to do like they weren't trying to regulate gamestop they were doing something in a in a market so the but they show but my point is we've shown ability to work in Tandem. Unison. Yeah. Um, take this back 50 years ago. If you wanted to vote on a bill or something, how would you do that? You'd have to mail in your ballot or some shit. Like we'd have to mail out hundreds of million, 300 million fucking ballots to everybody. Then they'd have to check off their thing, mail it back. You don't know where that mail's coming from. There's no real regulatory systems. Like there's just no tools in place to allow for a direct democracy. But that's not the case anymore. Now we can all do anything we want from the comfort of our own home. We can shop. We can vote. We could communicate. Do we can taxes. dance. We can look at each other's asses. We can fuck on the internet. I mean, there's everything that we're doing. So I, our taxes. So I don't see why we couldn't set up a system where you go to www.somethingsomething.gov and vote today on that, this. That's why our constitution bill. is a living document. Yeah. Because over the course of however many years America's been in existence, we've had these gigantic leaps in technology, in culture, mm-hmm. and all these other things. So that's why. It's a tough barrier to change and, or to amend the Constitution, but the ability is there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that when our government says, no more alcohol for you Americans, yeah. and all of America's like, fuck, fuck that, that. <laughs> then eventually, I mean, it creates the mafia, yeah. it, all this black market. Eventually, America's like, all right, well, two-thirds of Congress, uh, two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, and the Supreme Court have ruled, okay, we're going to amend the Constitution. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, like you said, we could create a system like this now, but we got to want to. Again, I don't think that like what that what that does. This is why they're bitching and complaining right now. Right. It's the spread of power. This whole game is about maintaining that collection of power, right. because as long as you have that collect, as long as it stays behind closed doors and we get to make the decisions, then again, you GameStop, you really think you're doing something to the system? You're not. Right. Like, it's cool. You got your little change. Like, I'm excited for everybody who made money off this. Right. Yeah. Or like got their little win. But you didn't really fix nothing because these people still got the power to, like you said, yeah, just shut crush down this Robin and, Hood and, and uh, control all the yeah. yeah. You a little know, like, thorn in your side. Then they were just like, get the tweet. Shut down control Robin Hood Z. <laughs> yeah. Control Z. Undo, 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 undo. <laughs> so as long as that power is pooled up in an oligarchy type form between the, the, the government and the big business and the bankers, all these guys, the small, small portion of our society has all the power. As long as that happens, then the game will remain unfair. But because, wh- th- again, when we talk about Occupy Wall Street versus now, right, what's the difference, right? What's the difference? Because when the bankers did it and they manipulated the system, fucked it up, and then asked for a bailout, we all bitched and complained, right? We were like, this is wrong, right? So we, we saw it was wrong and we called it out. Nothing happened. Now, opposite side, we do it. They look at it and say, well, that's wrong. We know. We yeah. said that already. But now what will happen? It's going to get changed. All kinds of yeah. shit's going to happen. As soon as, it, as, soon as you now, flip it on them, they're they like, wait, 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 wait. I don't like this yeah. anymore. And then they'll make, but then they'll make the law that fucks you so you can't do it to them again, but they can still do it to you, yes. right? And then that's the fucking fuck. Because shit. their rules committee is benefiting from the but rules they They're create. also playing the game. And I love that you brought that up because that's one big thing that I would institute too. I mean, uh, 
service, like public service, a, a, a office is a as an act of service. It's not you do not get rich by becoming a politician, or you should not be able to get rich by being a politician. It should be like becoming a fucking teacher or something, right? Like it's an act of service. Like I'm going to serve my community by taking on this, and it should be a noble. Like profession, the nobody fact gets that it's rich not, in the military, right? Nobody gets rich in the right? military. They are giving a service, service to their country, to, whether or not you believe honor. it's right or not, or whatever. It, it comes with people being like, "Thank you," and appreciative, and honor yeah. because you're doing an actual service. I'm putting my life on the line for fucking forty five thousand dollars a year. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And some college. That's how that should be in that sense too. You should not be able to trade stocks. You shouldn't be able to do anything in any financial institution or market that would benefit you personally mm-hmm. if you're holding an office ever. Once you've, once you've taken on an office, like you said, the amount of information, the things that we're going to give you as tools, you should no longer be able to do that. Now, of course, what are you going to do? Uh, I don't trade. My brother trades, right? So it's like, you, yeah. you know, you're, you're, well, that's you're, why you're, Nancy Pelosi's husband, husband was the one yeah, that bought yeah, the yeah, side. Yeah, see, He's a venture capitalist, that of dirty course, motherfucker. Of course. <laughs> right, so, venture capitalists I mean, I'm joking. I'm joking. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, it's going to game. But th- there's ways that we could have made that the incentives not align for them to manipulate us that's yeah. the thing that sucks i feel that a hundred percent i i agree like um i just finished reading nassim taleb's book anti-fragile and that was something that he talked about which was you know like he he believes that there should be a cap on income like however much you want the most highest paid politician to get maybe it's the president the president makes four hundred thousand dollars a year then that's the cap you cannot in a year make more than four hundred thousand right. dollars holding public office right doesn't matter you, you can't everything else it. goes into taxes or, or whatever yeah however you want to do it but that's what? that was his thing and i was like i agree because then the incentive structure would be set up in a way that you would get more maybe noble people in in right. the positions you know and that's the problem and i think that you know a lot of people see you know the the whole idea of like power corrupts you know so like a lot of people get into politics with the idea that they're going to do good. And then you end up like Rod Blagojevich. I got this fucking thing, and it's, it's fucking golden. Golden. It's golden. You know, if you asked anybody in that man's community yeah. before he became a politician how good of a man he was, I'm sure a lot of them would have been like, I love Rod Blagojevich. Yeah, he's, he's a fucking awesome he's a guy. guy. He got His the flip kids play with squash with my kids and all this stuff. Right. But, you know, as soon as you get in there and all of a sudden you have all of this. This is why I don't like when, like, really ugly people – talk shit about sports athletes like cheating on their wives and stuff and i'm like you're not tempted there is no virtue without temptation in the sense that like you don't know what it's like to have a wife and also have literally hundreds of millions of the hottest women you've ever seen (laughs) want to suck your dick that's a horribly you don't have morals you're just ugly (laughs) yeah exactly you don't have morals you're just fucking ugly dude and that's why you know that's why jordan peterson says it's not moral to be weak (laughs) Because being weak means that you can't hurt anybody, but that's not necessarily moral. It just means that you don't have the capability. Yeah. But being a monster and deciding not to hurt people mm-hmm. is a moral act. And I yeah. think that that kind of example is 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 what we see here. You know, it's you can't have it to where they can come in and then even if they are good people, all of a sudden you give them all of these opportunities to make money. Yeah, and and the get- problem is that they're they're the politicians are also being influenced mm. like it's not like mm. you know because they are people yeah. you know so like the people it's true as an example the people who work in the department of labor thomas Sowell was actually a marxist all throughout his 20s and he was in milton friedman's class went to the school of uh, chicago's economics which is a very libertarian kind of right-wing leaning college and they even through all of that he remained a marxist but he says that one summer of an internship working in the department of labor got him to realize, okay, maybe the government isn't exactly the thing that we should be using to help people because he saw that the department of labor had its own incentives. The people in the department of labor, the guys that just push the papers around, like the lady behind the desk at the DMV, their incentive structure is not set up in a way to help this person get a higher wage per se, like, you know, the minimum wage, the minimum wage makes up over a third of the entire Department of Labor's budget. Hmm. So you can imagine that if somebody comes up with the idea that, hey, maybe the minimum wage is like, the more we make it higher, people are losing their jobs. That's not good for them because if you can prove that the minimum wage is having the opposite effect, they might cut that bill and then one third of your funding goes down and then everybody gets laid off and the other people take a pay cut. So in their own personal interest, it's good for the minimum wage to stay Mm -hmm. and it's good for them to keep going up regardless of whether or not it actually increases people's pay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so like you have to understand that these are also just individuals being influenced in the government. 
and you know i think that that's why i don't really agree with your your category of the one percent because it's so amorphous and undefined that it's hard to explain uh the last time i checked i think it was only four hundred twenty five thousand dollars that you have to make in a year to yep. be in the one percent of america i would love to bring up that video yeah and, uh, let's bring up the video because it, it explains all that in great depth i yeah. also want to bring it back to the point of uh you know the incentive structures for the president like if somebody mm. becomes the president you're saying like you can go in there with honorable intentions and then be corrupted up by being the power. Corrupted, yeah. I wanted to make the point that it works on the flip side. Donald Trump did not come in to try to fix America or make America great again, in my opinion. He came in because he wanted that motherfucking bag. Uh, yeah. And he proved it through, in my opinion, he proved it through his actions yeah. uh, by shutting down, moving the FBI headquarters because he didn't want another uh, hotel to come in across the street from his hotel yeah. because his hotel was right here. The FBI headquarters was right here. They had set up this whole committee that had decided years before him that they were going to put it over here. And he was like, no, because then that building's going to become a hotel. It's going to directly compete with mine. Mm. So his personal interests are the reason, in my opinion. Did he say that out loud or is that? What oh, he didn't say it out loud, but he, he just, literally squashed it. It's, he it's, had, yeah, you he know, had the you ability it, to you stop can see it. it. Yeah, you he can had see the it. ability to say, no, we're not moving the FBI headquarters. Yeah. And he instead, exercised that for whatever reason. Well, yeah. and instead, it would have cost less money yeah. in the long term to, to move, move it over here yeah. than to fix this building because they had to redo the entire building. Instead, fuck he that. said, no, fuck that. Redo the entire building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to make that point works on the flip side. And then when it comes to the 1% and what defines them, I would love to watch uh, from well, about the minute f 25 mark to the four minute mark. Yeah. And I would say it's not quite the flip side because I think the flip side of what I was saying would be that somebody comes in with negative aspects and then gets influenced to become a, a good politician. Yeah. It's really just somebody who came in recognizing like, hey, I could use this political power to 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 gain rather than somebody being like, I'm going to help people. And then through the process of being a politician, become somebody that thinks, well, I can also gain from this. Yeah. They asked people how they thought the wealth in this country was divided. Then he asked them what they thought was the ideal distribution. And 92%, that's at least 9 out of 10 of them, said it should be more like this. In other words, more equitable than they think it is. Now that fact is telling, admittedly, the notion that most Americans know that the system is already skewed unfairly. But what's most interesting to me is the reality compared to our perception. The ideal is as far removed from our perception of reality as the actual distribution is from what we think exists in this country. So ignore the ideal for a moment. Here's what we think it is again. And here is the actual distribution. Shockingly skewed. Not only do the bottom 20% and the next 20%, the bottom 40% of Americans barely have any of the wealth. I mean, it's hard to even see them on the chart, but the top 1% has more of the country's wealth than 9 out of 10 Americans believe the entire top 20% should have. Mind-blowing. But let's look at it another way, because I find this chart kind of difficult to wrap my head around. Instead, let's reduce the 311 million Americans to just a representative 100 people. Make it simple. Here they are. Teachers, coaches, firefighters, construction workers, engineers, doctors, lawyers, some investment bankers, a CEO, maybe a celebrity or two. Now let's line them up according to their wealth. Poorest people on the left, wealthiest on the right, just a steady row of folks based on their net worth. We'll color code them like we did before based on which 20% quintile they fall into. Now let's reduce the total wealth of the United States, which was roughly $54 trillion in 2009, to this symbolic pile of cash. And let's distribute it among our 100 Americans. Well, here's socialism, all the wealth of the country distributed equally. We all know that won't work. We need to encourage people to work and work hard to achieve that good old American dream and keep our country moving forward. So, here's that ideal we asked everyone about. Something like this curve. This isn't too bad. We've got some incentive as the wealthiest folks are now about 10 to 20 times better off than the poorest Americans. But hey, even the poor folks aren't actually poor since the poverty line has stayed almost entirely off the chart. We have a super healthy middle class with a smooth transition into wealth. And yes, Republicans and Democrats alike chose this curve 
nine out of ten people, 92 percent, said this was a nice, ideal distribution of America's wealth. But let's move on. This is what people think America's wealth distribution actually looks like. Not as equitable, clearly, but for me, even this still looks pretty great. Yes, the poorest 20 to 30 percent are starting to suffer quite a lot compared to the ideal, and the middle class is certainly struggling more than they were, while the rich and wealthy are making roughly a hundred times that of the poorest Americans, and about ten times that of the still healthy middle class. Sadly, this isn't even close to the reality. Here is the actual distribution of wealth in America. The poorest Americans don't even register. They're down to pocket change. And the middle class is barely distinguishable from the poor. In fact, even the rich between the top 10 and 20 percentile are worse off. Only the top 10 percent are better off. And how much better off? So much better off that the top 2 to 5 percent are actually off the chart at this scale. And the top 1 percent, this guy, well, his stack of money stretches 10 times higher than we can show. Here's his stack of cash, restacked, all by itself. This is the top 1% we've been hearing so much about. So much green in his pockets that I have to give him a whole new column of his own because he won't fit on my chart. 1% of America has 40% of all the nation's wealth. The bottom 80%, eight out of every 10 people, or 80 out of these 100, only has 7% between them. And this has only gotten worse in the last 20 to 30 years. While the richest 1% take home almost a quarter of the national income today, in 1976, they took home only 9%, meaning their share of income has nearly tripled in the last 30 years. The top 1% own half the country's stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. The bottom 50% of Americans own only half a percent of these investments, which means they aren't investing. They're just scraping by. I'm sure many of these wealthy people have worked very hard for their money, but do you really believe that the CEO is working 380 times harder than his average employee? N not his lowest paid employee, not the janitor, but the average earner in his company. The average worker needs to work more than a month to earn what the CEO makes in one hour. We certainly don't have to go all the way to socialism to find something that is fair for hardworking Americans. We don't even have to achieve what most of us consider might be ideal. All we need to do is wake up and realize that the reality in this country is not at all what we think it is. That's the that's the one thing we can all agree. That was on. a great video. I love the animations and stuff. I love the, the somber uh, piano and everything. Yeah. It really sets a mood. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Maddie for showing that to me. Yeah, um, we were having a discussion about finances and things like that, yeah. and she was like, "I think you should probably watch this video." Yeah, because she had seen it in school or something mm -hmm. along those lines. And uh, I was mm -hmm. like, "This is a really good representation. Like, it's you. I can you know." I get lost when I read articles about economics. And yeah, like, the numbers. And when people are just talking to me, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, I, it, it's, it doesn't stick as well. But when you have a graph like that, it, it just it helps me a lot. So I thought I would bring it to you guys. Yeah, 100 mm percent. -hmm. I, I love that they talked about how it was like um, the the top one percent own 50 percent of the stocks. So like we're literally talking about this like. 99 versus the one percent here and it makes you just see like when you see that these guys lost three billion dollars or something in january chump change by the way sounds like this it's huge nothing. number yeah. but obviously it's one little it's stack like off of that giant so column. nothing to them yeah. so yeah. They, they're they're hurting but and that's cool to see that like redistribution of wealth down to the lower class through through a move of their own trickle but, down economics buddy come but, on <laughs> but almost though almost in the sense of like W which one comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? So th does the fact that you don't have 1% type wealth um, be the reason you don't have stocks and bonds and stuff? Or you don't have stocks and bonds to get and you shit up like that is the reason you don't have 1% wealth. So yeah. I, I, I think that that was an interesting number to correlate because we all know that money makes more money. You know oh, of I mean? course, yeah. And I think that, yeah, it's it's a difference of how you look at the, the statistics that he's using. But I think one, one really important factor that wasn't really illustrated in this 
video was that they didn't actually talk about numbers of what these categories were. And this is why I have a problem with describing people of America as categories, as amorphous categories, because people move through these categories throughout their life. M you know, most people start out in the bottom 20% because you're spending your parents' money. You don't have any money of your own. But actually, you find out that that o over 90% of the people that start in the bottom 20% make their way all the way to the top 10% at some point in their life. And most of the people that spike that get into the top 1% is a is a one time spike in their life because these numbers are collected from t from tax revenue and stuff like that, like income tax and stuff. So when you look at somebody who has for the last 50 years invested in a 401k or an IRA or whatever it is that they're investing in. And then in one year, you sell all of that and you get this ginormous increase in your income. All of a sudden, you you've now that. become the one percent. Even though next year your income is going to go right back down to what it was before or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a little bit higher than that. And so I think that you have to describe individual people. You can't look at people as a category because the categories are set and people move and they're fluid. I, I just but have a quick question. You obviously, said they're not moving uh, uh, very far up. I have a that's question. not true. That's you, not true. Well, that's that's what I want to ask the question about. You said the majority of people down there in the bottom 10% or 20% move up to the top 10%. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I mean, that's I would absolutely like to, true. I would like to. I would love to. Or at least that, as yeah. far as I understand it from the people in economics that I've studied, um, there is much more movement through these classes, if you will, these these economic status boxes than we actually think. I can believe that. There's, I can believe like that. Like the believe 1% that. is not the same people every year. I the 1% is not the same. I disagree and also with that. The, you know, like he was talking about the 1% representative as one man. That's actually a really good representation because again, he didn't talk about what kind of incomes you have to make in a year to get into these categories. Like I said, you only have to make $420,000 a year to get into the 1%. So no. that that extra that extra amount of money that you're seeing is being dragged up by people like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. People have a, a crazy amount of net worth collected in one to two people. You know, those kinds of things skew the skew the graph in a way that makes it harder to understand. And another thing, 80 percent of Americans are live paycheck to paycheck. Now, if that's true, that means that people who are making upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars a year are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, that doesn't necessarily seem to me like they're not able to afford the basic necessities of life. It just tells me that they're spending their money just as fast as it comes in. So there's there's different ways to look at these kinds of things, especially when you start applying it to individual people and you start applying actual income numbers to that num to that okay. data. Look at the look at the curve. Look at the curve. Right. If you start all the way at the bottom, how easy is it for you to run up this hill? To the uh, top 10 percent to the top 10 percent. Right. It's pretty jump. damn easy. Now, how is it going to be trying to run up here? I mean, damn near impossible. So I would I would ar I would argue that, yes, there probably is tons of movement from the low 20 percent to the top 10 percent. But it doesn't change the fact that this whole group of people, 99 percent of these people are overwhelmingly and disproportionately compared to that top one. And so I'm, I'm not arguing. I don't, I don't think that this is a graph that says you cannot get rich. That's mm. not what this graph is, right? Th that's not the graph. The graph is just saying, why is the difference so great? So great. I'm not saying that there should be no difference. I'm not saying that there isn't like, you know, like that you can't come from that itty bitty nothing all the way to the top if you want to. Maybe one guy in the everybody gets to that, right? That's fine. But why is that process so hard for the majority and why is it so disparaging? I think that it doesn't matter how you break the categories down and that's what they said doesn't matter what the numbers are. Just you you think you think that that should be that it, something yeah. is wrong. It's something like our, wrong. our middle class is that does not look like a graph that looks evenly or well distributed. That it, looks it, like something wrong. It also doesn't look like there is a middle class. That's it why there's like no middle class. Poverty, That's why they don't put the numbers in. Because yeah. when you look at the graph, you're and you're describing it as running up a hill, and when you look at it in a way of like running up a hill. That's almost a, a straight incline. So there's no way that you could run up it. But that's not how it actually works. You know, you're talking about like Jeff Bezos is the guy all the way at the right. He's the richest person in the world right now. Or well, I think he's a second now. Elon Musk just passed him. But, you know, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are the two guys at the very end of that graph. 
Jeff Bezos, the picture of Amazon.com when it started, he's in a garage. A lot of these guys are in garages, you know, and, and a lot of one guy, get, one, one guy. guy, you know. And so one it's not guy. like you're like you said, it's not impossible even to get all not the way impossible. to the end of the of the stratosphere. It's but just because incredibly unlikely. Yeah. The problem There's one LeBron. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like it's it's um, and I, I also wanted to I made a note about the idea. He talked about the idea of CEOs working 380 times harder than other people. Which again is it, that's not true. I mean, people who work in a coal mine work much harder. That's why I said that they than a CEO. Yeah. But they're getting three hundred eighty times the. It's reward. not. They don't get paid by how hard they work. They get paid based off of the results that they produce, the value that they provide the people who are paying them that money. In the same way that we talked about with the sports athletes, you're getting one hundred sixty-five million over five years. That seems like a lot. But the but the the team pays that to everybody basically. They pay hundreds of millions of dollars to multiple guys every single year. So really, what it is is it's about how much value people are perceiving that they're res- that they're getting from other people. Now you can say that they're overvalued. We've had this conversation I 100% a lot. Percent believe that you know you also throw decide their own salaries. Leadership. You throw on a little Supreme logo on a basic Hanes T-shirt or American Eagle T-shirt, and apparent and you know all of a sudden it's worth one hundred fifty dollars. To some people, to other people, it's not worth anything like that. You know, it's just another T-shirt. So you see no correlation between the conversation we were having about being able to manipulate the the, the system and doing all that, and the correlation between the collection of wealth around those people who do create that system. No, 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 no. I, I'm not saying that you once you get to a certain level, you can then have more influence over the system, which games it in your benefit which then helps propel you up even further up that ramp like you said amazon didn't pay any taxes so th- i'm not saying that that doesn't exist yeah. i'm saying i'm just adding some more info to this video mm-hmm. info that was intentionally in my view left out because it's i mean he seems to have done a lot of research and and planning and stuff like that to make this video but you know things like how 80 percent of americans are living paycheck to paycheck things like you only have to make four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to be in the one percent and so I think that adding all of this extra context, I'm not trying to refute the the overall con like the 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 point that this man is trying to make with this video, which is that somehow the system that we've developed has very greatly benefited a few and pretty much left a lot of people out in the cold. And I think that the by adding some of this context, it just allows people to have a further understanding of the entire situation and and i would like to just make it a point again i would like to see the source that the majority of the bottom 20 percent make it up to the top 10 percent and i'm not saying you're wrong i'm saying i i just i can't imagine that that's a real thing and if it is i would like to be informed because i think that there's i think that's a a huge minority but i think what what i mean only reason i could assume that you would want those figures to be um evaluated in this is that you don't want to take responsibility away from the people who are in that 20 or middle class and say well um you have no this is why you can't get to the top right it's because the people at the top got it all and then so that's why you're stuck and you're broke and and because that will that will paint that picture because that turns into eat the rich because when you think about vision when you think about the middle class and all these people who are you know doing pretty well for themselves uh, they are making actually pretty good money right hundreds of thousands of dollars and so it's like you know they're doing okay but i still think that that's just such a small class like there shouldn't be just there's a small 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 motherfuckers who are just living it up then there's another small 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 group of people who are doing pretty well for themselves and then like you said there's just a whole trash can of motherfuckers in the wake and then these people up top will turn around and, and spew to our face that they're doing what's best for us in our best interest can't wait you can't raise I mean? the minimum wage like, what are you, know, you talking like, about all these things that they'll say like that it's impossible to do or can't do or we there's no way like it won't work that way it's like but it's working this way you know i don't see that yeah, don't it's see working that. to their benefit this way to theirs yeah exactly and, and i think that you know there's a difference between trying to say that we should have a more um, equitable society and trying to say that, you know, people shouldn't be allowed to be as rich as they are. Yeah. And I because I do believe that there's a there's a way that 
the way that you speak and the way that you think about things, the language that you use will determine what kind of conclusions you come to. And all I'm saying is that I want it to be more of a a discussion about how we bring more people to that upper limit rather than dragging people down from that higher place and kind of it, it just breeds a lot of class division. And uh, oh, and I don't think it breeds. I think it's here. I mean, class division is is not something that we're bringing to the table. It's just something that exists, you know. Uh, well, I mean, it does. Like, do you think it would just exist if there weren't differences in the classes? No, I'm just saying, like, that's that's my problem with this whole graph, right? It's not that, like I said, nobody's going to – we all dread socialism. There's not going to be a everybody's on an equal playing field. That's not – just not going to happen. Possible. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But Well, there, just inherently because the, there, the, the level of dispersion, though, is also a problem. Like, there just should not be um, – us over here and you guys like down the street around the corner in the other building like that's the level of like th i don't see how anybody could look at that graph and just not see anything wrong is my thing yeah no like, I, if you if you look at that graph and you don't see that there's a problem i'm just like you don't understand graphs very well well <laughs> it's not about seeing that there's a problem the pro the issue that i'm having is that it's about noticing what that problem, problem is actually is yeah. rather than saying there's a problem with this those people shouldn't have that much money that's not necessarily the problem the problem is that the system is set up in a way that you can game it and leave the rest of us out in the cold yeah. so and that's what i wanted to to point out and just that there's there's a lot of different conclusions that could be come to from that video and adding more information what's will your conclusion my conclusion about the video yeah like like you said there are a lot of conclusions i've made up mine which is that there's a mass inequality in america between the rich and everybody else and i uh, just wondering like what what conclusion you came to well this guy didn't tell me anything that i didn't already know mm -hmm. so i mean i didn't really did, i didn't come to any new conclusions based off this video i mean it was a lot of information that i've heard a lot before already mm -hmm. um and i mean i think that it's you know again another limiting factor in his analysis is that he stuck to just the united states whereas if you expand that across the entire globe Every single person that lives in America is in the one percent of that every single human being that has ever but lived. That doesn't affect the Americas. I'm not saying that it does. I'm just saying that th a difference in the way that you, a different perspective on the way that you look at the statistics, will change some of the conclusions that you can come to. Exactly. But if you're living paycheck to paycheck, to, excuse me, paycheck to paycheck in a one bedroom apartment, eating government cheese and taking food stamps, you don't like think like, well, at least I'm not in the Saharan desert. Like you think about your present situation no i understand that mm -hmm. I, and i'm not saying that those people should you know like think that oh well i'm i'm doing pretty well because of the you know the mumbuti people in the congo have malaria and shit like that that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying again i'm just adding more i'm not making a point at all i'm just adding more information mm. to the context of this discussion what i got so that more people can have a better understanding of what's all going yeah. on what i got from the video was essentially that the middle class doesn't exist yeah. You know, like I, that's broke. that was the thing that really hit me hard was that I always thought it was like you can be down here or and then you could make your way up to here. And then that middle part is like living comfortably. Right. And, you know, m being able to invest and save money and stuff like that. And yeah. what this graph is kind of showing. And like you said, th there's a lot of other things you can put in. So I'm not taking this as the end all be all source. But what it looks like to me is based on just the distribution that that middle class is far below what I always thought it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always thought I feel that, you. that, that I feel they you. held some amount of wealth in America when in reality, based on just the distribution, they hold a very small amount of the wealth. They like are not poor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, we, when you compare them to, to the amount of money that, you know, like you said, I think it, it's a handful of people, less than 50 people own more than 50% of all the wealth in the whole world, right. yeah. in the whole world. So I, I'm not saying that there's no issue there. I, th I think that there's just a – there's different issues at play. Especially when those people have the nerve to come on CNBC <laughs> and bitch. A bitch about at it. At the, the that we low took a little, 30 tiny percent thing. that they got one over on you. Those that's, 50 that's motherfuckers, they are the rules committee. That's what I'm those saying. Those 50 exactly. motherfuckers exactly. are the rules committee. Are the rules committee. Exactly. And then, like, that's the part that really just irks everybody. It should irk everybody. If you're watching this GameStop situation, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to feel, but I'm just <laughs> saying, like, if you're watching this GameStop situation, that's what I see. You know, that's what I see. I, 
the reaction by the people the, at the, the top is the ridiculous. the people at the top is the, is the most ludicrous thing I've ever fucking it's, seen. It's, it's, it's wow, just wow. a bunch of hypocrisy. Wow, fucking, wow, wow. Like, and, it, and it goes to show that it, it shows their true intentions. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. know, because like you said, they don't want you to win. It's not like they want that, that when you finally win or you figure out some shit. It's not like they're like, ah, uh, you got. That's it. why like, way way to get on up here. You know, come on, come on, <laughs> good up for on, you. Yeah, like yeah, let me help you up, up, buddy. Yeah, exactly. No, it's like, oh, this is fucking bullshit. Like this is wrong. We need like, to build a fence around what this. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's why the people who are in the the quote unquote middle class, the people who are making, you know, hypothetical. I don't know exactly what it would be con- situated, but anywhere from like one hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars a year. That's why those people still live paycheck to paycheck because a lot of the information that the guys at the top have is not being disseminated to everybody else, you know? And that's why the internet has really disrupted a lot of these institutions because the information is being spread. You have people that are big time, you know, wall street guys coming out and they're making YouTube channels and they're telling people the secrets and they're showing people how it works. And you have, you know, movies like the big short explaining how these housing market booms and busts come about and what what sort of that things this game go stop shit could be national that, exactly. news like we're all talking about exactly. it exactly it that's the kind of thing that is the democratization i think it's really the democratization of information which is why i'm always such an advocate for education not like school but just like learning information i'm such a big advocate for that because i feel like out of everything that i've seen S- information and skills right underneath that are the two most valuable things that people can have mm-hmm. um, to, you know, become rich for, for the rest for, of the world for, for the rest of the world. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. For a, in, in a way to contribute to society in a sense to get little value beans back from mm-hmm. them, information and skills, skills on how to implement that information are the two things that you need. And so the fact that 80 percent of Americans, including the, the middle class, don't save, don't invest because they're not aware. Of also, how we're never taught any of that. Like, yeah, we're never like taught that. any of that. It's a curriculum when I go issue. through high it's school, a yeah, well. exactly. When I go through high school, even in college, nobody taught me anything about that taxes. To this day, I have no idea how taxes Literally, are done. Some of the first don't know anything about it. In, in, like this is some people's first introduction to the stock market. Right? This yeah. Like you don't even. Shit. You're like, oh, I mean, I knew that right. the stock market was a thing, thing but, but you, you know, no you have no idea, idea what it is and there. why people get into it. Or I did what not it know does. that redditors could. Sh- could just take fifty four percent of a hedge yeah, fund's capital. Yeah, like, I no, had no, no idea that, that Ask Potato sixty nine could do that. that exactly, <laughs> and I think that the um, which is why I'm always pushing more information. In. Now I have my biases, so my information's coming from certain sources. Um, but and, and I mean on this economic tip, you could basically just to link it back to two people, Walter Williams and Thomas Sowell, who say basically the same things. Um, but I think that. That's why I've I'd spread always your loved knowledge base out though. For huh? sure. I would definitely spread your knowledge base out a little bit for sure. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I I try to um reach out to more like like I want to read some Keynesian economic stuff and I want to read some other stuff like that. Like I'm hoping to get and I I'm trying and to learn how to do this. Just not saying what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, facts. I mean, it's I hard to do. agree with this. It's hard I really want it's hard to it's do. Hard to it do. Is so I'm not going to sit here and be like a yeah. fucking, you know. It is incredibly incredibly hard. To sit there and just listen to somebody speak. But I will say that at the time when Occupy Wall Street was going on, I was much more one of them. Like, I was much more in the idea of, like, Bernie bros and shit. Like, I was all about that. But at the time, I literally knew nothing about economics. And now that I know this one line of economics, my ideas have changed. And you're right. If I read... Keynes and I read Marx and I read these people. I I will have a better understanding of economics in general, and that's what I want. I don't want to be a like right now. I'm just kind of like a trumpet for a certain line of thinking, and so I mean you're pointing out a really good point. It, but I also think that that's information. I didn't hear any information from Keynes, but I also didn't hear any information from Soul. And so like now that I got the Soul information, I'm like okay, well right, now, now my ideas are a little bit different, and I'm sure that the same thing will happen if I read Keynes and if I read Marx. But I think that that's why I'm always promoting more information, more numbers, more. And I know it gets drowned out from a lot of stuff, but it's just about taking your reticular activating system and pointing it at the things that you're interested in and trying to get as much as information as you can about it. I will completely agree with that 100 percent because it has been my information that has taken me from the Occupy Wall Street time, which was what, 2009, 11. 11. Yeah. Um, so as late as 2011 to now. Uh, 
I've moved from that 99, like a 99% mentality to a 1% mentality. And I've watched my economic status move in correlation with that, you know, Mm. like as I've gained more information about how this stuff works, how I can put my money to better use rather than just spending it, I can invest it. And if I invest it, that can raise my net worth. And then, you know, like just understanding these things of like how these systems of wealth growth happen and Mm -hmm. work. I've moved my, my wealth up the scale. Yeah, and so and the democratization helps. of information. Information helps. Yeah. But I definitely will at, – at, on that side of the spectrum, I'm there because information has helped me. But I can see the ceiling too. Like oh, the, yeah. Uh, glass ceiling. I, I can see where – it's not bad people. It's just human nature, right? Yeah. You don't let people in your clique for no reason. You don't just <laughs> let people up in your crew because they look like a good dude, right? Like you have to earn your way in there. And so – for them, they're maintaining that status quo at the top, you know, of like this is what we believe in, this is our values, and we're not just gonna let anybody else in. I see that too in their ability. Like, if I game you on GameStop stock or some shit, mm-hmm. then you'll immediately come and try and cut my head off. With I want to uh, yeah. interject too that you know, as much as I'm not very, I'm not very, I'm not really into economics and mm-hmm. and stuff like that and wealth and you're an uh, artiste, exactly. Yeah. So based on that point, uh, you know, what do a lot of uh, creatives and artists, what do they tend to fall into? They tend to fall into this idea of Marxism and communism. Mm. Um, so I Because they want to do their art. <laughs> well, I studied it a little bit mm. because what, it, what really stuck out to me was the idea of the means of production. Mm-hmm. So if I can create my own art mm. and I can give it to people, then I own the means of production. Yeah. And if I can distribute it through YouTube or something like that, then I have somewhat of the reins of the distribution right. as well. So – I've taken what I've read from Karl Marx and, you know, the Communist Manifesto, which I haven't finished, but I've, I've been trying to get through it yeah. as I've learned that. On my list. Yeah. And like one of the things that really stuck out to me was this idea of like, you know, power to the players, mm-hmm. you know, the workers and mm-hmm. things like that. Now, I do not agree with 90 percent of what I'm reading from the Communist Manifesto, but what I'm trying to do is mine the little nuggets of information that I think are relevant to me, yeah. which are the means of production, workers' rights. Mm. I've, I'm a firm believer in the idea of unions, not in the implementation and how they work now. Mm. But I am a firm believer that people should be able, if they are working for someone and they're using their skilled labor, to be able to then say, well, we believe we should be paid a certain amount. We should mm. be- believe we should have vacation. They pay. should be we able should to be- negotiate with that the same way Amazon can negotiate the with same way that they put their business. The in same way that that CEO decides his own fucking salary. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like mm. the reason that CEO is being paid all that money is not necessarily because of his risk and his benefits. Some of that is in there, too. But it's because he's in with the board. He's in with the CFO. He's in with the accountants. He controls all of their salaries. So he can kind well, of but there's there's always a guy above the CEO. Yeah, I was about to say because a CEO is not a CEO is just as much an employee as anybody else there is. So they may have more say in the negotiations of their pay. That's the point. But if it wasn't incentive to the people who are paying him that money, he wouldn't get paid any of it. But I also would agree that too, like perceived value, right, is what fucks up a lot of this game that we're playing, right? It's like how much is the CEO worth, right? And how much is he not? Because I would say that it's not, he doesn't, he's not 380, 180 times more valuable, but he's gained the ability of influence that would create that type of, you know what I mean? Like he's convinced you that he's worth that much. And that in itself is, um, well, I mean, maybe I think the problem with it is that from the outside looking in, with no skin in the game at all, it's easy to look at the CEOs of these giant companies and say, well, they're getting paid way too much. But for the people who are paying them that money, it's clearly not too much. It's clearly no, no, enough. It's, it's, it's like, like they're they paying, they're under giving them the money. Right. They're, getting, as, something in they're getting something in return. Salaries, I can understand to an extent. It's when uh, during COVID, the Kroger CEO got like a $24 million bonus. Mm-hmm. And it's like. Because Kroger made more money, though. Like you said, they didn't just artificially like. You know, times are hard out here. I want to make more money. Like billionaires and people who make money have been making more money since COVID started. Like you said, yes. that's a pressure that's falling on the middle class. If, yeah, you, ta- if you take just Jeff Bezos and mm-hmm. just his uh, increase in his profit, like his his net profit, mm-hmm. if you take just his increase over the 365 days of COVID, the first year of it, because we're in like day 390 now. But if you take just that first year and how much more profit he's made, you could literally give every worker at his company a check 
for one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. See, but then that's the interesting thing, right? You, they would get bank, right? But why would they deserve? I'm not that saying increase? they do. I'm saying yeah, that yeah, is I mean, just, just a it's regular, a way to look a, at it. It's a way to figure, look at yeah. it, just like that graph is a way to look at yeah. it. But it's not the end all be all. I'm yeah. just yeah. saying if you look at just his profit mm. based on he was making already the richest man in the world, mm. already the richest man in the world got an increase equal to one hundred twenty thousand yeah. dollars. The big well, I also don't want to conflate market. net worth with income. Like Jeff Bezos's income isn't whatever his it's net not worth Jeff, is. It's not Amazon. The only reason that his net worth keeps jumping up at such high rates is that the value of Amazon keeps jumping up, and most of his wealth is tied into Amazon. Yes. My problem is with that whole situation, right? It's not that it happens, not that like the workers should get, but that you are the one who said we have to go in quarantine. Right. <laughs> Not Jeff Bezos specifically, but I guarantee you, like, he, you know, I mean, these are the people who are get to decide if or if we do not quarantine. Yeah. And on the back of that decision can also benefit, benefit, can also profit. From it's the that. rules committee putting the money in that the pocket. also yeah. gets to just yeah. win, the the game. Yeah, win the game. That is fucking yeah. doesn't make I never seen an NBA owner on the court. Never. It's true. Never seen it. You know, I've never seen David Stern dunking over Giannis how you Antetokounmpo. Get to, you get to own the game and play the game and referee the game. and You know, that's yeah. just too much. I've never seen Roger Goodell drop a 65-yard yard bomb the, on a dime. Put a ring on. He, like, he's the commissioner, but he also gets the Super Bowl ring. Like, get the fuck out of here. I, you know, mind. the final point I just want to make is eat the rich. That's a joke. That's a joke. I don't actually want to eat no, the But no, do that. Do that. You are eating them. That eat like that's the way you do it is you beat people at their own games. If you want like that's the way I saw it. I said, "Look, this curb exists." Like th whether we want it to be or not to be or whatever we think the reality is versus the ideal of what we wish it there's a reality. This is the reality. You play to win the game. You mm -hmm. know, uh, the way I seen it, I said, "Okay, fine. I'm down here. I want to get up here." Like you said, other people have gotten up there. So I can get up there too. Some somebody out there is climbing Mount Everest. Some people like I'm not saying it's easy. It's not as easy as whatever. This is just the reality. I just live in the reality, and this is mm -hmm. what it is. And so I say, okay, well, how can I play that game to where I can get up there? And then test yourself. Maybe when you get up there, you could yeah. be the altruistic yes. one. Yes, you, you could be can the be the one change. who said that yes. you. Oh, if I ever, you know, and like that's my mentality. It's I been, agree. Since that day is like, all right, well, fine. They're obviously not going to do it for me. I can occupy all day. I can bitch and complain all day. I can. They're not going to do it for me. But if I can beat them at their own game, I can get there, and then I'll be the the yeah. king of the rule. If I get to the point where committee. I'm paying people's salaries, I'm going to allow a union. Right. Facts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like exactly. And so to, we can shape in ourselves. So uh, that's been the biggest thing for me, man. Is is going off and and looking for that, studying those motherfuckers at the top, and seeing how they've been able to create this wealth for themselves realizing that stuff like this GameStop thing is the move and Bitcoin is the move and that I can invest in my friend's startup or yeah. whatever the freedom fuck of it. information. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the, to know how this stuff works is we, it, it is freedom. Of, Cause I got all this information from Google yeah. currency trading stocks, everything I know about this whole gambit that we're talking about did not come from any school. It came from literally that Google search bar. Yeah. Shout and out the so internet. Let me, uh, fucking love you. let me make a couple of really interesting. Like I, I want to see your reactions to some of these points i mean they're not necessarily like contradictions or anything Last but point. um go. yeah yeah so i think that uh one was that you know the occupy wall street protest is very interesting because when you look at it it's 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 a lot of people saying that they're being oppressed by you know and they're so poor compared to these other people um but it's really interesting to see that a lot of them you know like they camped out outside those buildings for weeks and I don't know a lot of people that are strapped for cash that could not go to work for weeks at a time. It's only a couple out. thousand people. Yeah. I mean, either way. I mean, if they don't represent the whole society. That's then, what I'm saying. It's yeah. just it, that's one interesting thing. But I love that you brought up the Mount Everest thing in the sense like it's not easy. I heard I don't know. I don't haven't seen looked at the source of this one, but I've heard that more new millionaires are made every day than um, the people that climb Mount Everest in a year. Yep. And it's like. Wow. So, like, would you think that then maybe making a million dollars is easier than climbing Mount Everest? Or does that have to do with the amount of people that are interested in climbing Mount Everest as opposed to becoming a millionaire? I definitely think it's incentive. I think it's a I think it's an interest thing, you know, in the same way that there's a an interest level play going on with why so many women aren't in like STEM fields and stuff like that. Like it might not be just because men are keeping them out, which might be happening on some level. But it also might be that women don't really want to be engineers or whatever well like the that. big the big trick right is as a, a generalization of both 
It's, it's a combination it's of both. Like, it, this yep. this graph, the inequality in America, is a combination of it's it's us at the bottom with no interest in the getting to the to the one percent. Like we're not That's focused true. Some on. People are like we're that. not doing the things that it takes. Like we could say we want it, but like I said, you ain't at home studying the stock market. You ain't at home learning about finances and like money. Like you ain't. So you don't really want it. And then at the same time, the people at the top aren't in like a hurry to help to, like, you help get you there. Out. Yeah, like, yeah. To make it for you. <laughs> the system to give isn't it to you. for the for the vote yeah. for the those of us that do want to get there. Yeah. It's not like they're sticking their hand yeah. out like let me pull it's, you up. It's yeah. not necessarily right? that the system is rigged, but there's a lot of rigging in it <laughs> yeah like, like uh, <laughs> you see what i'm saying yeah, like they, their their fucking boot isn't on the neck yeah but but it's I, I got some footprints on me you know what i'm saying like you definitely have to create a loophole right yeah. like you gotta you gotta it, it, it's a game built on manipulation and mm-hmm. so you gotta manipulate something in order to get it you know and i hate to say it like that you know but i think that that is is the case yeah you change know? your mindset you know Get facts. out of that poverty that's the, mindset, dude. That's facts. Dude, that's a, just a big one. I yeah. just that's a big one, man. That's the like, biggest thing. That's the, these kids on Reddit are doing it. Like I said, I, my my friends talk yes. to me daily about investing in in things. Um, you know, your mindset is why you are wherever you're at on that spectrum. You know, I believe this is why I love this. Like, if if we're gonna look at the GameStop thing as a protest against you know the big corporations and stuff like that and the hedge fund managers i am much more in line with this kind of a protest than i am with occupy wall street because it's active you're doing things you're yeah. you're making decisions you're taking actions in you markets took risk. Like and it, you took on risk everybody took a risk because they could have lost all their money yeah. going up against and i guys. think that um i think that the difference for me in those two things is like you know even if it's only a few thousand people the occupy wall street people were not like it's if you were there studying finances and stuff like that, then maybe. But it, it seems a lot more like what most protests seem was like yelling at people that you don't like or that you don't agree with. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, just from personal experience, anytime I've ever yelled at somebody doing something that I didn't like, it never solved to the me issue. It's the uninformed approach. Yeah, but but for people like these redditors who do have a small amount of information, who have. And, you know, maybe some people who didn't know anything about the stock market, but just like the memes on the on the on that subreddit, maybe they were influenced and educated enough to, like, get in on it. And maybe they were the kind of people that were able to, like, make some money and buy their moms a car and stuff like that, you know. And so that kind of that kind of action based protest or that kind of just just taking actions on things rather than just voicing complaints to the people who are the ones that you're being oppressed by you don't want to end up action. you don't want to end up like the guys on my document in like the i think it's like the third example it was um a group of world war one veterans in the late 1930s or, or mid 1930s that went to dc went there and said hey you gave us these certificates that said you were going to help us out and you were going to pay us this is before the va and stuff you were going to pay us based on uh, but you were going to pay us in 1945 so they gave us these little vouchers and said yeah, in like eight ten years we'll give you some money and they got to a point where they were all like fucking really poor and the economy did great depression had happened. So they were just like, hey, we want to want you to make good on these and we want you to make good on these now. And like something like forty one thousand of them or something marched on the Capitol. Mm. And you know what Hoover did? Fucking came out, fucking cleared them out, burnt their fucking tents and shit down. Damn. So the so the fucking the president was like. You ain't getting no fucking money from me. I'm a when bar- I say he literally them. they brought their families and camped out in DC and Hoover was like, clear them out and burn it down. Damn. And just like, get that shit off my lawn. Yep. It, yeah. And they're like, but we're but we're veterans you and we got this voucher. And they're like, Yeah, we're gonna pay you like six more years. Get yep. your ass back to the poor. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. And the worst part about all of that was that even if Hoover wanted to pay them, they didn't have the money to give them mm. to him. Yeah. Because nobody knew that the depression was gonna come about right after that like you know you pay these guys these like bonds Spain and stuff come looking for their gold yeah like yeah. you know it ah uh, we kind of don't not have right it. now yeah we kind of <laughs> don't have it and then the worst part about it was that then world war ii happened yeah and it's like yeah we kind of still don't have it we're yeah. kind of it's we have it but it's it's tied, tied up, up. Yeah. My right money, now i got a lot of weird i got money it tied up in stocks stock, and yeah. bombs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we're working a whole housing thing right now, and I just yeah. my money's not liquid. Trust me, so. in in 1994, you're gonna get everything. Yeah. I'm gonna give it all to you. You're gonna get the house. You're gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna make up for burning your tent. Yeah. Trust me. I know you guys don't good. trust ninjas it's right now, tight. but trust me, these ninja loans are gonna love we're, them. We're, you're gonna love them. We're just tied up right now in GameStop. Love it. So <laughs> yeah, I think if the, the 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 number one takeaway for you guys who are listening to us is just educate yourself now that the internet is out there and you know we're seeing the censorship of people on these different platforms like it it is now or never if you are going to Mm. get access to this free Mm -hmm. information because the internet is only like 30 to 40 it's years true. old. So if, and, and eventually they to push the button, yeah, on everything eventually else, they so. will shut that shit down in a way that makes it harder for you to get on there. So you true. just need to go ahead and get in there now. Get it my, while get it, while it my, my good. My takeaway that I want you to take away from this is uh, invest your money. Mm, Learn yeah. about your finances. Yeah. The government's giving you stimmy checks. Yeah. These Redditors are doing something big with their stimmy checks. Yeah. What are you doing with yours? You spending it on motherfucking video game gems? Mm-hmm. Get your shit together. Yeah, that was my <laughs> thing too. Um, and, and I guess my only takeaway is that is emulate the rich, which is essentially like you were saying. Like if you want to get at these people, don't complain. Don't bitch at them. Beat them at their own game. And when you get up there, be a force for good. And be different. Yeah, be yeah. different. Be do different, do yeah. all those things you said you would be like to the see change somebody. you, you want to see. see in the that's world. The, that's <clears throat> it for me. All right, we appreciate you, Internet. We'll see you again real soon. Peace. Peace. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this.